I'm thinking, just like me, mm. I've we you know we've uh, we've seen a couple of Wes Anderson Wes Anderson films here. Yeah, him. I think a lot of us, and especially me, with this film, we got a little bit of a case of Wes Anderson fatigue. Really? Mm. I just think he needs to get out of that whole dollhouse. Oh no! Oh, it, uh, it's a beautiful no. film, but it's just it was just too giant, dude. It was just overloaded. It was oh. just. Oh, have you seen a French like a Dispatch cameo. yet? Huh? Have you seen a French Dispatch yet? Uh, no, I have not. Or if you think this is jar? <laughs> no, I was gonna say no. The one that just won the Oscar, Henry Sugar, man. Oh my! Oh, god. Oh my god! That leans in. Welcome back to the Watchtower Film Woo! Podcast, the film review podcast on the Towercast Network. That's right. By cinephiles for cinephiles. I'm a file. I, I really don't like of that. Cine. Why? It's it's a word. It's, just because I'm, people don't know what it means doesn't mean anything. It's okay? just too close to. Oh yeah. my god. I know we've talked about this, but it just it sounds. It just, you it's know? great. What's wrong with lovers? I'm a cinephile. It's, it's trademarked, probably. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Imagine Almost somebody is movie far lovers. away from a speaker. So you want me Bye. to say what? Cinema lovers? Yeah. That's too close. Cinephiles is a very elegant word. It's it's amongst. It's, it's like amongst saying moist. Cinephiles? It's amongst cinephiles. Yeah. How about moist? Yeah. yeah. Just, it's like saying moist. Cinemoist. Yeah, Cinemoist. It's, it's, Buy moist movie lovers for moist movie lovers. <laughs> we just lovers. lost so many <laughs> listeners who hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined today by my fellow co-host, Mr. John Eric Oswald, so bringing us an acting perspective. How you guys doing? Uh, do do the thing. Do what thing? Act. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, also, producer, writer, extraordinaire. FPV. Oh, nice. I, I appreciate I that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 a couple more things, but those are top. He's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. FPV oh, yeah, and drone pilot. FPV drone pilot. Huh? Oh, I was, I was just repeating what he said. Oh, good. Oh, I was just repeating what he was repeating what I said. Timing, people. Timing. Mr. Michael Lala bringing us a cinematography perspective. Come on, do the thing. Say you like lights. Hey, how's it going? Do it. Do the thing. I like lights and I like movies. That's that's me. <laughs> Making sure we're looking good here because he, this man here, the lighting camera guy sets up the Gene. lighting oh, and the yes. camera. Wouldn't you know? I it? built that light. He's like a genius. That's why it flickers every now He's and like then. Rain <laughs> He's like, like Rain, Rain Man. He's like Rain Man. Things Wait. he's really good at, and just certain things we're just like. We're not going to invite you to that party. There's certain things like, why are you repeating that four times in a row? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Wait, I have, Miss- I have a question. Mm. Dude, let him go. To the- <laughs> I'm not allowed to ask your question. What's going on? Oh, no. Finish your thing. I, I can save it. <laughs> Mr. Austin Young, make sure we're sounding Whoa. good back there and uh, looking good in the edit because the man spends his time editing our sweet, lustrous faces. Yes, he does. I'm getting tired of looking at him. Yeah, I get tired of looking at him, too. I actually love it, dude. <laughs> That's all I wait for. Oh, yeah. To l- yeah, when I'm watching to the look podcast, at just our faces. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you meant like watching me edit. He I makes an like, evening out of it. He gets some lotion. He gets some Jergens. He's, you know. Some Jergens and Red Bull. <laughs> Jergens is the way to go. But if there's no Jergens, dog. The Red Bull? Red Bull. <laughs> 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 if I want to get it quick. Red Bull is a must, bro. <laughs> Jergens and Red Bull. Is your wings. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that order. <laughs> I'm your humble film servant, Carlos Torre, bringing you a writing directing perspective. And this here's my coffee mug. Woo! Full with um, Criterion Love. Criterion Love, because the reason I picked this mug is because I'm pretty sure the film we're doing today is going to get the Criterion treatment very soon. Uh, nice. We're talking about Wes Anderson's 2023 uh, Royal Tenenbaums. Royal Tenenbaums. Royal. With cheese. I wish. <laughs> Do you like the Royal Tenenbaums? Yeah. I've never seen it. Compared to this. <gasps> We're talking about Asteroid City, ladies and gentlemen. This film is, I don't know, a it's 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 a Careful. it's a comedy. Careful. But thread, it's thread lightly. Thread lightly or tread lightly. I think it's one of those films, just like I said, the more my car tires are getting out of one of those. <laughs> the more great cinema I'm exposed to, the more I'm convinced that great cinema just surpasses genre. And exceeds genre, and and this certainly does that. So I can't, you can't call this a western. You can't call a it romance. a straight comedy. You can't call it a straight ro- a romance. Um, we're talking about Asteroid City today. Uh, nice. In connection to the Oscars, thank you for tuning into our Oscars episode Appreciate and to the live, um, and our St. Patrick's episode, and our St. Patrick's <laughs> episode, The Departed. Hope you guys like that. Uh, today we're bringing it back down into 
the Oscar snub episode, which we try to do every year. (laughs) Jeez. Last year, we talked about Babylon as the snub. Yeah. Uh, This year, we're talking about Asteroid City, where three, at least three out of the four of us agree this is the Oscar snub. Look, I'll give okay. my take right now. I'll just give my take. It's my opinion, Wait. and you guys give me This back. is very naturally a collective choice, but yes. very even more naturally a choice by Mr. Michael Lalao, who Wes Anderson is his god. Yes. And, um, it's good. Good. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Before you, we get started. Yeah. Castro, what the world's do, been waiting to know, and it, it's too much time has passed. Now it's kind of an awkward question, but... Just send Why it. haven't you started an individual page for your FPV stuff? Good question. Simple answer. It's getting very illegal to do what I do. Really? Yeah. Even with a license. Really? Yeah, because... They want to make in sure that you like zone out a section before you fly and all that kind of stuff? Oh, no, yeah, that's already a law. That happened like about six months or a year ago. Where you in El Paso have... or in general? Oh, and, uh, like in the States? or No, no, in, uh, everywhere. Oh, okay. Really? Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure like they have their own little laws over there, but... Now you're supposed We're to. We're over there. Like uh, Europe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But um, that's mostly why. Like, I've gotten police stop me. Border Patrol has stopped really? me. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, and they've been what cool, but I've heard stories where they actually call it in and they actually get a fine. Oh, man. And it's a, it's a pricey fine, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I think El Paso is probably still, like, pretty, like, fresh when it comes to that I was just thinking stuff. about that. Yeah. I started this about five years ago. Yeah. Barely people are starting to do what I'm doing right now. Uh, really? Mm-hmm. And those are the ones I'm hearing the stories where, oh, I got stopped. Well, because they don't care, right? I mean, they're just they're just going at it. They've told me that they're, they're, they've seen police officers acting like citizens just waiting for people to come. Wow. Because they've heard from people like, oh, a lot of people fly here, a lot of people fly here. So they go and... Mm-hmm. And they go to those, like, place. sections, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably mostly why... Makes a little bit of sense. The other reason is just... How can I put it so you guys can understand? There's a lot to go into it. Like once, you, like if you wanna go do a session, yeah, there's a lot. Batteries. No, yeah. Like I, when you brought your yeah. pack, that's why I was asking. Because like the other day when you brought your pack and uh, we saw you like flying around and everything, and then you showed us like clips or even like the clip uh, that you did at the undisclosed location um, where you're like zooming down into the logo. Oh, like yeah, yeah. all that stuff's really cool. So I was wondering, like, why aren't you? Posting? I got kicked out. If you see the end yeah. of that. Video. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. The, the security guard came in. Oh and, shoot. So it's hard. It's it's just hard. What do you tell them? You're just like, hey, give me a minute. Like, like when your parents like come in. You're Luckily, that there. security was guard was pretty cool. He was like, "Hey, well, can I see some of the footage or whatever?" And I was like, "For sure." But like, "Hey, I'm getting the calls from upstairs." With that, you, know, you can't you, do that. Yeah, you got somebody that's not authorized to do, be doing this stuff. And I'm like, "Appreciate it, man. Just letting me know." So that's mostly why. Ah. Uh. But last time I, when I came in and did the little thing FPV here, yeah, oh, dog. I missed it so much, uh. and I haven't lost it. If you guys realize, if you guys saw, I haven't lost it. You scraped your face a little bit. <laughs> Missed it, but uh, I don't know. That's why. Mm. But yeah, man, I still love it. If you want to just... see some drone FPV stuff, stay tuned. We may or may not be doing something in connection oh. to that for the podcast. So Whoa. coming right up. Um, you know what else has pretty cool aerial shots? Airplane. This Asteroid film, City, bro. Asteroid City. That was a good alley oop, bro. Oh. And he's sorry, wearing I that hat. I play baseball. It's I'm right, sorry. It Ellie. It's basketball. Oh, dad. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're killing me, Smokes. <laughs> We're going to talk about Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. Asteroid City. Um, wow. Wait, do you like Asteroid City? I love Asteroid City. Oh, I can't it's, tell. This like, going to be awkward. Oh, I'm sorry if he, the audience hasn't noticed, but I'm uh, repping as much Asteroid City as I can. I like shaved here to make it look like the ass anyway Ooh. but no no um i have he's a fanboy a hat which came from you guys it came from which, mr young yeah i have the mug the mug <laughs> i actually did not bring because i think i lost it somewhere in my house because i used it so often and it's kind of <laughs> tiny um yeah and then look we got you this sick, just said that it was dirty it's dirty it's really dirty <laughs> Is this so, all come- so dirty, dirty. You yeah. don't even want to know. Was this all like a bundle or something? No, or? like so. What's really were. cool is that uh, <coughs> for the premiere, because mm-hmm. uh, oh, we went to go see the premiere. Uh, uh, Alamo was having a promotion that you could pay into a package when you got your ticket, and like you couldn't get this unless you bought a ticket. But um, it comes with uh, the lunchbox, a little postcard, and um, the cup right there. The, the, and, su- the soup, yeah. yeah, super super cool. That's cool. Oh, and then um. 
shortly after, maybe like a month after we watched it, something like that. Um, I had a lot going on in life, and I just connected with this film in, in multiple ways. Uh, so I went out and I got like a still from the film, which I think is going to be hard to see. But basically, it's a, a little square in the same aspect ratio of the film. Your and, camera's right there. Oh, I think it's still going to be hard to see. And then I can't like rotate oh, that's it, right? Good, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a still from the film, like when they're looking up at the solar eclipse that's going on. And it's when you see that green dot, like when the alien appears. Um, so, yeah, like I just wanted something to encapsulate myself as a filmmaker, uh, what this film meant to me. And then also just like I this is now at the top of my list when it comes to Wes Anderson films, like out of his entire filmography that I've seen. That's cool. Um, I'm only missing two. <sighs> Same. Uh, what this did this film mean to you? Oh, my God. I. Well, you think you're your answer. This film stars Jason Schwartzman, Scarlett Johansson, Tom Hanks, Jeffrey Wright, Tilda Swinton, Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, Adrian Brody, Liv Shriver, Hope Davis, Stephen Park, Rupert Freend, Maya Hawke, Steve Carell, Matt Dillon, uh, Hong Chow, Willem Dafoe, Margot Robbie, Jake Ryan, Tony Revolori, and Jeff Goldblum. That's not even an all-star team, dude. That's the dream team. That's, right? that, That's the, the dream team. Somebody right? said that they hadn't seen a cast this good, like so this dynamic, like a full kind of all-star cast since um, uh, Bridge on the River Choir. It's a 1950s picture. Like, they just had all the kind of the all-stars of that era. Right. So, pretty awesome. What does this film oh, yeah. mean? I love a cast. Oh, man. I mean... I'll, I'll say this to kind of open it up. Uh, the film explores. It would actually help me out a little bit because this yeah, is my first time watching. Yeah, it. no, the, the film explores. No, this, no, no, for sure. No, it, not this in a concept way. of. Um, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> when when people talk about life, like what is what is life? How should we view life in general? Not, not even like talking about the film. Uh, one interpretation is that they say life is kind of like a school, you know, that you go and you learn, and after you uh, go through all of life, you die, but you kind of graduate into you've learned all that you can from existing. Um, right. Other people interpret life as like a play that everybody just is meant to serve a role and you just kind of fulfill that role in the stage play of life. You certainly. Yeah. Did you write that down? No, it's like, uh, it's that's he's talked about that a couple of times. That's, how, that's how he's that's a really yeah. good life lately. You've of just put me playing in a, a, role. In a good, better place right there. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, life goes on and we're all just meant to kind of play a role. And nice. that's what this tackles and dives into <clears throat> is this, this notion of like, Going through life, um, there's all these different things that are going to happen. And as long as you're playing your role, other people are able to play their roles. Kind of think of like on a stage play. Like I was um, mm -hmm. recently talking to my friends who were in a, a theater production of Anna Karenina. And um, they were talking about how it's their first time being on the stage. But the challenge of like, I can't say my line or go until this person like moves a prop a certain way. Or like does mm -hmm. this thing a certain Kish. way. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of like in life. Like, we don't move forward unless everybody else is playing their role and we're seeing how everybody's interacting. And, yeah, yeah. we're just kind of going through the play of life, you know, that <clears throat> life's just going to kind of happen and you're just supposed to do your role and that's kind of it. And once you understand what your role is, then you can perform the play better. And that's where this kind of comes into play. Okay. Uh, and uh, it, it uses that metaphor in a very literal sense, because these actors are actually in a play, going about doing different things, um, having this ex, um, extraterrestrial experience, and then trying to make sense of it all, and in their own personal context, with their own personal challenges. And um, at the end, there's this wonderful line from Jason Schwartzman where he goes up to Adrian Brody's character, right? And says... Director um, character. Yeah, he says... Um, like I want to know if I'm doing it right, and then they have this whole where he's just like I, I like I'm doing the mannerisms and everything, and I keep doing the play, but I don't understand it. Like I I still don't get the play. Yeah, I, I still remember. don't get what this means because his hair uh, his character goes through a moment where he just burns his hand, and they never explain it. And you know every he talks to even the person who wrote the play, and he's like, what does that mean when he burns his hand? They actually mention it at the very beginning of the film, and he's like, I don't know. It's just kind of there. And then he's like, well, is it him trying to explain why he's feeling sad? Why like his he burned, heart, Why yeah. his heart's racing so yeah, fast. Yeah, like why his heart's racing so fast. He's like, oh, that's a good line. Like, maybe, sure. Like, we'll have him say it. And he's like, and he's, no, no, never mind. He doesn't need to say it. And then it's like, so what's, what's the point? And he's like, 
there's no point. Like, you know, you just have to keep performing. You just have right. to keep going and being your character. You're doing just fine as you are in this moment. Uh, you just have to continue on. And that's kind of what the whole movie is about. It's just you're not going to be able to explain every little thing that comes into play. And especially like the whole concept of like science, right? Mankind's obsessed with trying to explain everything that happens like why do we see things a certain way why is it that we experience pain or in, in this certain situation psychiatry tries to tell us that there's this emotional context inside of us that will explain why we react a certain way and you have all these ways of trying to explain life and the unknown and you can drive yourself mad and at a certain point in time you just have to accept like life's just gonna kind of happen and i just have yeah. to keep moving forward so this and the film is all just to kind of my own personal reminder of like life's just going to kind of happen Beautiful. and we just have to kind of keep going on. And I've, I've just connected with it so much, especially um, we go through a lot. I mean, I went through a lot and this just helped me kind of find solace in life and in the insanity it all is. But yeah, that's why like, I love this film. I love it to death. I feel like also on a film front, it's his most artistically, um, like, how would you yeah, say? Artistically explorative. Yeah, uh, metaphorically of, yeah. explorative. Yeah, it's just uh, you can see him actualize as a director. You can in, see him, his growth and his... Culmination. Of well, his ability to take risks, yeah. right? His ability to take risks yeah. for the sake of art, which is why we talked about a lot of how this is an Oscar snub. And, you know, we I have theories on like, oh, I, I just don't think he submits anymore. I think... I, I have a little more insight on that, actually. On Wes? Not... Well, like, on why it wasn't so, nominated? Yeah, it was Focus Theaters who was in charge of distributing in the U.S. Focus mm. Features? Yes. Focus, yeah. Guess who else they had in nomination for Best Picture? Who? Holdovers. So they oh, had man. two out of... The, oh, but so how they, would this fall put, short? This is a way better film no, than Holdovers. No, but they were focused on I pushing Holdovers take. more. I got my take. Just, I think just because of Giamatti and maybe the script, yeah. like I mean. So I think Focus decided to put more emphasis I disagree. on. I also heard something about the holdovers being plagiarized, which is an interesting thing. Mm. Like recently, like IndieWire reported, like they're getting it was sued. Right before the Oscar. Yeah, it was, mm. yeah. <laughs> well, it's up to the distributor or the producer to submit, submit the forms and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's true. I, I, but that doesn't justify Wes not doing it for his last few films. The only ones that ever really get nominated are his animated ones or his shorts, which he just won for. I don't. I don't. I think he. he I think he does West doesn't care. He does submit. I mean, he it was it's better for his resume, for his pocket, for his he legacy. Does, that's that's what I was gonna say though. And I like, think Wes is he, at his point in this career. He probably doesn't care, but he would. Why care. wouldn't you submit? I don't because, think he's uh, agent. Dude, Wes Anderson it, it, left the United States, rescinded his United States. Um, no, no, no. Um, I his see what United you're saying. States. Uh, um, no, why wouldn't you? No, no. His, his citizenship. And now lives in France, where cinema was born. Mm -hmm. And all he cares about is making films that are reminiscent of French pictures. That's all he's doing now. Yeah, but how uh, do you get it out to the masses? By recognition? How do you get recognition? No, he, but that's my point. It's he's just, earned his stripes. A... There's not one, one distributor in life that's not going to take a Wes Anderson film, no matter what it is. They know how outlandish he is. They know how quirky he is. But it's still profitable. Yeah, well, yeah, he's got to make a profit, right? I don't mm. know. That, did this make... It this, doubled its budget. It doubled its budget, but it was low budget, I bet. $25 million. Yeah. Yeah. With look, that look. amount of cast, it's a tiny budget. No, and then also uh, Brody's gone on to record to say that he's taken like oh yeah, yeah. he's Him lost and money. Yeah, being uh, on think, these films. I but think every cast member on Astro City I mean, lost money. They're huge. With, uh, Imagine Scarlett Johansson. That's probably Scarlett Johansson's fee by herself is twenty five mil. Yeah. Forgot which actor said that he got paid like six hundred bucks. I, it might have been Will Murray. No, no, no it, it, was, it, was, it was at, was at uh, Norton. At Norton, yeah. Okay. He was like, yeah, I just wanted to be in a uh, yeah. Wes Anderson. Like, Everybody I don't really care. wants to be. Everybody wants to be in a yeah, Wes Anderson. But look, look. got paid four grand a week. <laughs> I mean, a, that's probably SAG minimum right yeah. there. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, just like me, mm. I've we you know we've uh, we've seen a couple of Wes Anderson Wes Anderson films here. Yeah, him. Yeah. I think a lot of us, and especially me, with this film, we got a little bit of a case of Wes Anderson fatigue. Really? I just think he needs to get out of that whole dollhouse. Oh, no. Oh, man. And, uh, it's a beautiful no. film, but it's just, it was just too jarring, dude. It was just overloaded. It was oh. just... Oh, have you seen a uh, French like a Dispatch cameo. yet? Huh? Have you seen a uh, French Dispatch yet? Uh, no, I have not. Or... If you think this is jarring... <laughs> no, I was going to say, no. The one that just won the Oscar. Henry Sugar, man. 
Oh my like, god! Oh my god! That leans into that world of like. No, no, no I'm not saying. I'm, you know. I like the film. I'm just saying that's probably what I think. You think happened. the masses are have a, yeah, a Wes Anderson like, fatigue? Okay, th- this is Wes Anderson. It's I, not I like- have to respectfully disagree because that wouldn't tell that Wes Anderson isn't growing as a storyteller. That he's just doing the same shit over and over again. I think he's using the tools that he's developed. Which personally, I've seen since since Bottle Rocket. Bottle Rocket has this Those like are beautiful, but they're sprinkled in right these quirks, these yeah. things, these tools that he's kind of since developed, and kind of to an extent, I think really, really found his voice in something like Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, oh, and yeah. then taking Probably those tools and saying, okay, I can do this. I can do something that's going to appeal to a ma- the masses. I don't know that I want to, you know, and take the rest okay. of this because everything after Grand Budapest Hotel was not as palatable. I don't think it was. Yeah, I no, think he I went think, in the complete uh, opposite direction to an extent, uh, right? I was just asking you about Isle of Dogs, and you you feel like that's also. I feel very... like it's super hyper stylistic, and I don't. I think some it gets lost, as Castro likes to say, it gets lost in the sauce with Isle yeah. of Dogs. I just think this. <clears throat> no, you could be as like. Harsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is West Anderson just jacking off in front of a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! By the way, Castro, um, I, I'll say hey, I'll say these two thing things. Good thing. I'll it's say just, these two things. I think the audience can agree. Two things for, uh, to your point. Yep. One, I think it's a kind of a, a really beautiful thing that you represent the audience member. Oh. Typically, no, in, in a great <laughs> sense. Look, man. <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, salty, but I'll you're, go with you're, it. You're, I, really, you, man. I really want Austin to like zoom in on Castro <laughs> slowly. No, but your opinion, you're, you're my boy, your right? opinion, your opinion, your questions are what everybody's like. <coughs> what the fuck? Everybody agrees with you. I mean, especially the Oscars. I mean, apparently. No, I, I still don't think. Dude, Oscars are super political. I'm man. not saying it wasn't uh, a good movie. Think... I'm just saying it's probably like, okay, that's what's Anderson. We got to take something different. I don't know. Different, think... different doesn't necessarily always mean good. And and by the way. Uh, that's, uh, th- th- that film. was one point, right? One yeah, point yeah. is I genuinely think the questions you ask are super important because if you weren't here, we'd just be jerking each other off cinematically. I've and it wouldn't, like that. That's, like, like, that's why I think it's yeah. a great thing. Yeah, yeah. So don't be afraid to point those things out because people want to know that stuff out. Trust Secondly, me, it was, it was the fun. whole the whole West jerking off. The scene, at, I will agree with you that at first glance, at first, like when we went to the premiere, I was like, mm, right. Mm. I know I gotta and give then it a second. I look. swear, the second time I saw it on a plane, I was on a plane and I had the perfect amount of time to screen. Exactly. It's not a long film, hour 45, I think. That's a yeah. perfect way to watch a film. And I'm sitting there with my iPad just watching the film, and then Sandra's asleep next to me. I think we we're going to New Orleans or I don't remember. New Orleans. And, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, I swear I'm doing this to Sandra. Like, oh, 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 shit. Yeah, I, you know. And, um, and seriously, on the second viewing, it's, it's insane how much you pick up on it. I'm pretty sure. And I'm this is my sure. third time screening it. By the way, uh, for those who don't know uh, in the audience, uh, Sandra's not that big. So I can just imagine <laughs> for her that must have felt yeah. like an earthquake hit yeah. the plane. Like, oh, yeah. God, are we going to turbulence? Let's, let's do it again, but exaggerate your movement. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to back to one. Okay, back and, to one. And, Action. And, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Are we in New genuinely, my wife, uh, you know, she and she knows what it means, man. She wakes up like that. She's like, oh, oh okay, it's just moving. Oh, oh, it's just moving. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, but at the yeah. second time, and and, and I'm I'm very um, ceremonial when it comes to these films, right? So I want to watch them <clears> on the <throat> biggest screen I can see them on, and uh, like even if I'm saying it multiple times, yeah. if I respect the film enough, I want to see it on the big screen. Oh, sure. And this time around, I was like, I'm just gonna throw it on because I know what to expect, and I kind of just want to see what I missed. And I threw it on, and it blew my mind, man, on this tiny screen, right? I was like, oh, my gosh. And then this time around, I just picked up much more character traits, much more of the character building, uh, because at first glance, you're like, this is too many characters, man. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what's going on. And then the second time, you're like, oh, the story, this is the big picture. And then the third time, I think, for me, at least, has been like, oh, I now I know why you're here. Now I know why you're here. Now I know why you exist. Now I know why you have a okay. gun in your waist. Now I know why you have a bald spot in your head. Like, you start picking up on these things, and you're like, oh, man, okay, you know? Uh, not to mention some of these relationships that at first you're like, who cares? And then then you're like, oh, man, this is this is life, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this should be a good segue into ratings. Yeah. Ratings. Yeah. Um, I'd like... I'd like it to go uh, counterclockwise. So, Carlos, would you give us your rating on this? Uh, quick, we'll go quick, and then we'll go into the discussion. Uh, yeah. I'm sitting at about rapid fire. I'm sitting at about a nine right now. Okay, nine. It was fun. I give it 
a 7.2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Austin? I'm at a 9.3. I'm at a dime. You're at a dime. dime. I expect that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, for tuning tuning in in to the Next week (laughs) on the pod. Oh. Like we were saying, like... You're not mad, right? You're not. No, no, no. Because no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Know. We're, um, like, we're cool and stuff. Like, but we're cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, like, hey, like, hey, we good, right? We like, we've seen each other naked, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> How, how's Tony packing? You know, um, how's Tony sure. packing? <laughs> no, I, like, uh, it's it's like with experimental films. I, I'm used to uh, that. A lot of times, like with any piece of art, uh, when you view them. Um, they're not going to be palatable for everybody. And, yeah. and especially like when you look at Wes's work and a lot of Wes's fans, um, it, it's like we're not at a point where it's like everybody needs to be a Wes Anderson fan. No, um, definitely not. It, it's definitely like a, it's an definitely artistic a thing. Tour, yeah, you, know? you, definitely... you definitely have to be somebody who likes this style because there's a lot of people. Right. I, I know that especially like my father. Um, when he first saw these like movies, like we, uh, the way I was introduced, like Fantastic Mr. Fox, when he saw that, he was like, okay, it's very quirky in its style, but it's also like a kid's movie. So he would just throw it on and it's, um, George Clooney having a midlife crisis. And I'm like, dad, this isn't a kid's film, but, um, right. Like you then it? you see it in live action and then that's where people get thrown off where they're like, okay, I get it. Kind of like you like doing these very weird like symmetrical shots with like these earthy palettes and then I love that. Yeah, yeah. And then have these characters just kind of awkwardly and very properly pop in and then something crazy happens. Like also I, I think Wes Anderson's starting to get a bad rap because just like anything else, he created a style, right? And fatigue, and when you not it, a bad rap. No, fatigue. no, no. I don't the, that's the problem. I, I think those two are intertwined right now because he gets a bad rap with most people because he created a style and that style has since been used without any intention. Mm. When you think oh, about things yeah. like, um, when you think about things like, um, there was like that whole meme that came well, out. I, mean, that, yeah. I mean, look, don't get me wrong for a while. Yeah. The uh, meme, whatever. Right. But I'm more talking about like when we do some of the cutaways in this picture, yeah, they're very mm-hmm. intentional. All of them are very intentional, but it, they reminded me of Napoleon Dynamite. Oh yeah. Napoleon Dynamite didn't have the biggest intention when it came to using these quirky kind of things. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I think, more people have adopted that style and just because oh, it's, it just feels quirky and it's fun as opposed to having intention behind it. Right. So I think I think that's where some of the fatigue for Wes is okay. coming from. You okay. know what I mean? Um, but anyways, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, did, oh, yeah, you guys are already there. Yeah, they were running around, right? Yeah. What did you say? Nine... 7.2. 7.2. Okay. 9.3. From the first watch, from now, the first now watch. Uh, coming from the standpoint of like, we're talking about Oscar snubs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to kind of talk about the categories like we think it got snubbed from. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I, actually, when I, I saw this, this is uh, Jason Schwartzman first time in a leading role in a Wes Anderson film since his early work, which was, uh, was Rushmore. I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. So I remember when I heard this film was announced, I was super. Um, curious like like yeah. jason schwartzman's always been like that background side character i was like so this is him back in front like he's leading he's, the, he's yeah. leading the charge and i mean i think yeah as a yeah character, definitely definitely uh, when you watch this film i don't know that there's a film that exists where he does this i mean he's kind it of feels adopt- like it's he's kind been of like he's got that, he's got, no 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 i mean for for wes oh okay and i feel like he's he's kind of to an extent he's being passed the torch from bill murray for wes Happening, you know, because um, this was yeah leading role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is also the only film since Rush, no, since Bottle Rocket. I'm where, saying that because and most of them it feels like he is the main character, kind of like. You think so? Well, like the side I, character. I don't know that I've ever that I like. felt that that Jason Schwartzman was ever the lead in a West film. No, I'm saying like where I kind of like that's the character I like. Kinda. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that's yeah, the character you kind of like follow they need the most. That character type. Yeah, that's interesting. Because he like before this he did a uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Darjeeling Limited and that one he was like a lead but also his character was the youngest brother which was always like coddled and taken care of by like the other brothers so Mm -hmm. that one he wasn't even too much in the forefront like he had his own story going on but it was kind of like on the side compared to like um, Owen Wilson and like Brody's character like them kind of being like the older ones saying like oh what are we really doing here Um, so to see him there I thought for sure there'd be some kind of at least an actor nod because, I mean, I, I think uh, the character's super dynamic. This this character that 
he's a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Like he's uh, an it is actor. a play within a play. Yeah, I mean, he's an actor who has a life that's outside of a play. Right. We should probably yeah talk about what this film's about. What this film's um, about? You, you mind if I yes, take please. a stab at it? Please no. Because hey, do you mind if I let Carlos take a stab at it? You know what? I'll allow it. So <laughs> I'll uh, allow it. hey, Carlos, you got permission, dude. You can do it, man. The floor is yours. Mm. This is a very complex story. 60 seconds on the board. So, oh, 60 seconds. I got 60 seconds. Yeah, man. This film tackles a an act of fiction, a fictional play, essentially, that uh, revolves around a small town in the California, Nevada, and Arizona desert. Uh, the name of that town is Asteroid City. Um, and this play really revolves around these individuals who are essentially stuck together for a period of time because of... Um, an extraterrestrial visiting the town. Um, they're stuck there for different reasons at the beginning, almost random reasons. Uh, you know, they all arrive to the same haberdashery, so to speak. Similar to the vein of, like, Hateful Eight. And then you discover the Hateful Eight. There's, it's all intention, right? But we go through the motions of these characters uh, only to discover, only to kind of revert back to the play itself. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back to the play itself... There's an additional layer pulling back that these are actors well aware that they're in a play, um, discovering different traits about what the play is about. I don't think it just lies on Jason Schwartzman, because I think every actor, I think every character is asking themselves what this thing's about. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of these actors are brought in because of an actor's workshop. Um, and they're trying to figure it out, too, even just by one scene. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, essentially, that's what the film's about. That's kind of what it encompasses. We don't follow one key figure. Um, in fact, depending on who you are, you connect to different characters, whether you connect to the actress, Scarlett Johansson character, you connect to the kids, and their sense of discovery and their sense of love, um, discovering that over science and what's logical, just a feeling and an emotion that they're trying to chase, too. Um, <coughs> there's so many, so many layers to this. So, yeah, I think it's... it's, it's Man, there's so much to break down. Uh, mm -hmm. But essentially, that's the plot. The plot just revolves around these characters who are yeah. stuck together. Um, and, and by the way, very intentional thing. Um, Wes Anderson talks about in interviews how the reason there is a quarantine is very much inspired by what we just went through with COVID. Um, mm -hmm. That's essentially what inspired the film, uh, he says. Being stuck together and then you're faced with your demons and you're faced with your yourself and you're, you have to look yourself in the mirror. Uh, by the way, the use of mirror in this film, too. Uh, I can only imagine what Sanderson <laughs> just, just... What? Going oh, my going gosh. Added. No, but think about, think about her awesome being naked. Uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character being naked in front of a mirror. Uh, and by the way, it's a body double, so don't, you know, don't, 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 go, don't go to Google so, people, so fast. Don't run to Google so fast. But... Yeah. Her character is an insecure actress. It's an insecure artist. She's an insecure artist. And, and when we see her naked in front of a mirror, we don't see her head. We see her body. And th that's all she's focused on. That's all mm, she cares about I love that. is how she's seen and, and the sexualization of, of her being. And, and even like they talk, random people will come up to her and, hey, I nice. like you in this film. And, hey, I saw you in that magazine. And oh, I heard even this like the about the generals, like whenever yeah. they bring up her name, everybody kind of mumbles like her name because she's the actress. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting, just like, that's one of the examples. The other example is, uh, uh, when they're in the train cart and he, the, the kid is looking at himself in the mirror as he's delivering these kind of sensitive topics, you know, these, uh, his role is to get her back there. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And, um, and he understood he's, yeah. And he's under the, under pressure essentially. Um, but the use of mirror is just, I think it's, it's pretty great in, in this film also, but it's meant to serve as this reflection of like, well, we sit around and we reflect on this <laughs> and we yeah. reflect on life and we reflect. And if the pandemic didn't make you do that, at least for some yeah. period in time, for sure. um, sure. by the way, you must've uh, found a lot of hobbies to keep you busy. Also, uh, yeah. Jason Schwartzman was one of the first ones to get the script from Wes and, uh, uh -uh. he, took on the role immediately because uh, in an interview he described how he went through an extremely similar situation as the character in the film. Like he, I, I think that somebody in his uh, family died. I don't know if it was a parent also or a mother or, or some kind of figure, but um, that his uncle just kind of picked him up one day and they went on a road trip 
and midway through the road trip, like, told him, like, oh, yeah, the reason we're doing this is because, like, your mom died. Yeah. And, like, Whoa. so he, he says, it's crazy, but I... I am this. Yeah. Like, and he yeah. told Wes, like, this is, I'm this character. I've went through exactly this. And it's huh. having to deal with these notions of, like, you don't know how to explain it to people. You don't know how you're supposed <laughs> to feel. You, you're just trying to process it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, you know, trying that while you're going through it, you're trying to tell everybody, like, oh, yeah, this is how you should think about it. And, yeah. So, I mean, there's so many layers in every yeah. character. Yeah. That it's just super unique. Um I think the first kind of big snub is I, th I think all the actors did amazing. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. they oh, all yeah, played their sure. roles. And then especially uh, like looking at like Schwartzman's character where he, he's both breaking into the role of being off the stage, on the stage. And then while he's on the stage doing Asteroid City, like he really does embody this, embody this uh, war photographer. And when he's off, you can see all of the vulnerability of like, am I doing it right? Is this all is, a, is it happening correctly? Like, what am I supposed to do? These beats. Um and then also playing into like Anderson style where everybody's dialogue has to be like super precise. You can't imagine that there's a whole lot of room for like improv. This entire nah, film the, feels no, like this style, you are no. on book a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Even if the moments feel very like casual, they all have to be very, you know, you have Who to be on this. So essentially it was Wes Anderson with the story co-written by Roman Coppola, uh, who's oh. been his, his, been his writing partner forever. Oh, wow. Um, I think he's been uh, he's been his writing partner since Bottle Rocket. I think he's been he's been doing it yeah. with him. So so uh, his style's always been yeah. you know yeah it has that's, to that, be precise. Yeah. You can't improvise because you know he's. I bet you he story does he storyboard a lot. Oh, I would well, think I don't know about so, that. right? You know, uh, since Darjeeling Limited, Roman Coppola just wow that feels late. Darjeeling, <clears throat> sorry, Darjeeling Moonrise, Isle of Dogs, French Dispatch, and Asteroid City. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. I thought he was around since wait since the beginning. Wow. Go figure. I mean, he did co-write with Sophia, and he did do other pictures. No, I mean, he's 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 been a writer for quite some time. He only has 13 writing credits. His first one was CQ in 2001. Oh, okay. Yeah. He didn't do anything big then before? Mm, Writing-wise, no. Huh. But yeah, his directed maybe. and produced a lot. But it's maybe. mostly Wes and then somebody. Yeah, Roman. Roman. At least now, Roman, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think the acting was a snub? Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely for for Schwartzman, um, it's because that's the thing, right? When you when you go with an ensemble cast, you you have to be well prepared for the fact that you're gonna get these characters in bite sized chunks. Yeah, uh, you know. So so yeah. you know, for oh. instance, the Tom Hanks character was extremely <laughs> interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. you guys kept but, mentioning like, about, Schwartzman. No, no, Tom Hanks and the. <laughs> the people popping in. Oh yeah, uh, it, <laughs> you like, guys didn't notice that, I guess. Oh, it's because uh, in this film, and again, that's where it goes to like multiple viewings. Um, like every time you watch this film, I feel like you pick up on something new because there's so many yeah. details going on everywhere, either in the dialogue or the visuals. And one of them that's easily uh, missed the first time I watched it is that uh, from the very beginning, the government's kind of always there, yeah. looking because these kids are coming up with these science projects, and they even have that joke uh, from. Oh, I forget what the actor's name is. He came out in American Fiction, the lead. Oh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright. Wright yeah. Jeffrey Wright. Where Jeffrey Wright uh, makes a comment like, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it's on the paper. Like, all these projects belong to Uncle Sam. Like, like <laughs> just because these kids are coming up with it and we're, like, claiming this is a, a fun science fair in the yeah, middle of nowhere. Fair, yeah, it's like, oh, awards. no, all these projects, yeah, they all go back to, you know, like, <laughs> the United shady. States government. So that's which, why. Which is also, like, a tale, right? Like, if you think about Asteroid City as a city, right? Um Especially when you get to the carnival scene at the end, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you start seeing remnants of like um, Roswell, New Mexico. Oh yeah. yeah, right, selling alien paraphernalia or whatever you know. And um, at one and point, there's a billboard for like a casino. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think when you think about the metaphor behind that, right, is um, interestingly, I think this is what I picked up on this the screening. the The town didn't even have a purpose. The town was purposeless, and now after the alien. It has a purpose. Now it's an attraction. Now the whole country knows about this city, okay. this town. Um, and and when you kind of relay that back to um, to the the many science projects in the middle of the desert, what do you think of government wise? Think of Area Fifty One. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, all these fantastic minds coming together to build whatever they're building, but it's it's almost like Oppenheimer. Never yours to begin with, dude. You did something amazing. You did something super human, 
but it doesn't it's not yours so it doesn't matter <laughs> it's almost yeah, yeah. like which is why i love the discovery of the kids thinking like oh there's there's more to life you know yeah uh love and even the kid who who gets uh, inspired to do random things like you dare <laughs> me to do this you add you know even he's like i don't know why i do it it's it's beyond me but i have to do it you know oh, so see, even I'm, the kids have that. these arts these it, interesting yeah. arts of like little scientists these naive scientists um and that's why tilda swinton character is so important uh, for them at least for their art is to present yeah. him as a guide like hey this this is this is important you guys are sitting around playing basically playing um playing a, a brain tag here with listing the names of individuals and keeping track of all of them she pulls him away in a very key moment where he's thinking about what he's going to put on the moon. What's worthwhile. Right. And she's going to pull him away and say, Hey, everything's worthwhile. Figure out your worthwhile. Don't, you know, you're putting symbols and symbols of the globe and symbols of politics and symbols. No, what's your worthwhile shit. Well, I'm this age. I have a crush. That's worthwhile. Boom. Um, and that Tilda Swing character is just like, Hey, when we're done with all this, please keep exploring science because you're fucking good at it. Yeah. Where other people are treating them like, here, here, here's a scholarship, kid. There's, We're keeping your shit. Have fun. Come yeah, up yeah. with the next thing, I guess. You know, <laughs> uh, I think that's such a really, that's a really special arc. Uh, coming of age thing, too. I'm telling you, man, this thing has multiple arcs. It's a lot of layers. Yeah. Um, uh, the one thing I also really discovered that I really loved this time around. The alien scene. The, uh, the what? <laughs> what the, did alien, you say? the alien scene. Oh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> right? That's what I was like. <laughs> no, it's Are fine. We all I mean, the same it's movie? it's. Um, this really this cheap? It's very. We'll go back to it's an a anecdote. Twenty-five million dollar budget. We'll go back to your anecdote. Of yeah. about when we first saw the alien yeah. scene, but keep on. No, uh, I really love the arc of Schwartzman's character. Essentially, when yeah, that one. He's playing three different characters, right? Essentially, the uh, Jason Schwartzman, the actor, right, is playing the actor who's been cast in the Asteroid City play. The actor in the play playing the father, essentially, mm -hmm. right? The second layer of that, the actor playing the, the father. That actor's exploring his existentialism through his sexuality. That's why him and the writer get it on. I mean, th that's something that's very much... Yeah, it's very... At first viewing, you're like, okay, that's cool. I guess kind of weird. Yeah. But then you start discovering like, oh, his whole arc is discovery, a sense of discovery from oh, okay. from the actor side of him all the way to the father side of right. him. Right. Um, he's wondering why he's forced to ask himself like, what do what matters in life? Because what mattered in life before was my wife took care of the kids, and I went off to war after war after war and didn't have to think about my kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now they're my world. They're, now they're everything. Now I can't abandon them. Um, that's existentialism. There, that's existentialism cool. in the sexuality that's factor awesome. and and. Just how like important it is for that character to get something right, mm -hmm. that's also the actor's point of view, right? Yeah, yeah. What does this mean? What do I mean in this? And then what I think it's, is beautiful is to put a cherry on top of that little arc, the writer dies. <laughs> you know? The writer dies. And, and they, they do a little bit of a flashback after they announce his death. When you get the, the mind-blowing fucking scene, I think, my favorite scene of the film of you can't... You can't wake up if you don't fall asleep. Yeah, you can't wake up it. if you don't fall asleep. I I have a feeling that as like as a creative as a writer, when you when you have a breakthrough, when you have a breakthrough, it's everything, right? You get excited, you get this yeah. rush of adrenaline. I think he died, you know, after discovery. He did see the play go for out. No, yeah, but, but I think that moment of of discovery through like this this class was like like more than his little heart could handle. You know, what I mean? yeah. like like he just died, and and you can't. I, I, I want to spend some time on this piece, on the, the you can't wake up if you don't fall asleep, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's, it's the film, in a sense. Um, and I think that's <laughs> where the writer went through, where he was so obsessed with writing the next big thing and perfecting his play and getting this thing perfect and, and becoming the writer that everybody thinks he is. And he's written other hits, obviously, right? He has to withhold his... He has to maintain his, his perception. Yeah, right, right, right. And maintain his reputation. Um, and then he, yeah, I think ultimately it gets to a point where it's like, well, I, I'm rich, I'm a successful writer, I'm good at what I do. So then what, you know, kind of what like we talked about in the Henry Sugar thing, right? Where it was like, okay, I'm rich and I can do so much, and then what? 
And I think death is that next trajectory. It's like, I can't appreciate life until I'm dead. Yeah. You know, so that you can't, you can't appreciate life until you're dead. And a lot of people go through the motions of that. That line is exactly that, right? You can't wake up if you don't fall asleep. If you don't fall asleep and you don't dream and you don't experience those layers of your own subconscious, when you wake up, life means nothing. You don't dream. You don't think outside of the norm. You don't think outside of the mundane nine to five thing. Good line. But if you dream and everybody had different, like the, that, the class, oh, I think yeah. represents humanity, right? Some people are sleepwalking. Some people are, dr- are snoring. Some people are doing this. Some people oh, are doing that. See, and and you pick up these things of like humanity and everybody dreams differently. Everybody has their different layers of living, but all of them get to the same conclusion. I couldn't get to the waking up part if I don't sleep. I couldn't appreciate that life for what it was. That you know? scene. I was just like, so whoa, 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 whoa. That, that scene always blows my mind. From the second time I saw the third, the first time I was like, uh-huh. okay. What? And I think the, the alien coming in at the end, at first glance, you're like, okay, well, that was. That's but the then, whole thing for uh, like Goldblum. Goldblum says like I'm playing oh, him as a metaphor. Yeah, I'm playing uh, him yeah. as a metaphor. Like when I think about my metaphor character. for what I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. I don't yeah. think any of us know. And then he gets there, and it's like, well, he's the piece of the post. Don't aren't we always as humans wondering? That's why we're everybody's so obsessed with conspiracy theories. Yeah. Right. There has to be more. Obsessed with religion. Obsessed with there's something out there. Yeah. This is this is the representation of that. We can't even process when we, like, everybody's processing the alien. They're even little kids. They can't stop fucking talking about it. They write a song. They paint yeah. a picture. All of us process this, and there isn't a right answer. We saw it with our eyes, right? The, the, this town saw it with their eyes, and they gave them purpose. They gave them questions. Somebody stopped, the kid stopped believing in God because there has to be more. Yeah. I just saw an alien in front of my face, you know? Um, I want to touch a little bit going back on how you were saying that it could possibly mean that he died, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right, in that situation. So Wes was quoted saying, I will say there's a theatrical kind of reference to it, but I'm hesitant to say it. Oh. At some later date, I'll say it. It's something that has been adapted. It'll be more interesting at a later date. Actually, when I do tell you, then you'll see it. It'll be more interesting. Better to let it simmer Any for idea? now. Any uh, idea? I don't know. Maybe Citizen Kane? Right? I was thinking maybe more like all that jazz. Oh, that too. Mm. Right? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So, just something to simmer on. But, yeah. but, but oh, by the way, specifically Wes is, doesn't want was, you to know. That's that whole paragraph that he's, he's listing. There's more to it. Wes doesn't want you to know. Wes wants this, this, you can't wake up if you don't fall asleep line to remain ambiguous. Yeah. No, he wants I, I you to, like he wants you to like, interpret yeah. it however you think you should like interpret it. Yeah. By the way, I love uh, in the screenplay. All these <coughs> mentions and notions of religion because how much that plays into everybody's daily life when it comes to trying to, again, make sense of it all and trying to have purpose and trying to go beyond just existing uh, and how, you know, every group, it doesn't matter who you are, like every religious group is yeah. with this fundamental of like, oh, um, we don't know why this exists or what all this means, but we believe in a figure above us that he knows. So yeah. He, yeah. he's controlling all of it, yeah. and he's kind of taking care of, like, like he's the playwright in yeah. all of our lives. And we're not supposed to know everything, but we're doing it, you know? We're just kind of living yeah. our life and all that nice, kind of stuff. Nice, and nice. I love how, uh, you know, even with, like, kids very young, like, they're, they're saying, okay, well, uh, we just got off the bus, so uh, let's um, thank the Lord that, you know, we got here <laughs> safe. And then they have these prayers that are just kind of like, well, this is just kind of what happened, and... Amen. You know, and it's yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. But again, that goes back to uh, how everybody processes existence and what that means uh, in their own way. And especially like you brought up uh, earlier, the the kids, one makes a drawing, the other yeah. one makes a song. We're all That's using how we these... interpret life, right? Yeah. That's what art is. Yeah. That's what art is. It's trying to figure out life through these different mediums. Um, art, music, uh, film, you know, and then this is a direct... I like that he used a play because... Um, it's meant to pose all of the questions that we ask ourselves as human beings through art, right? He's using a play, he's using the art form of theater right. to ask these existential questions. And isn't that what art, and in our case, cinema is meant to do? Is meant to? I always say it's always meant to hold a good mirror. cinema, important cinema is meant to hold a mirror to society or yeah. to yourself uh, or both. You know, so I, I I love just the approach on how they do that and. Like I said, each character has their own bout of it. You know, each character has their own bout on on what their what their role is in, in yeah. life. Um, 
And it's so interesting to see uh, Wes play with this notion more and more. Uh, yeah. I think starting from French Dispatch and moving more into... Uh, uh, now we saw the Secret Life of Henry Sugar. Mm -hmm. um, characters playing a role until they're not, where he can just open up a door at any time and using that as a yeah. very physical metaphor for pausing whatever is going on in the scene in life and just kind of leaving yeah. for a minute and being like, what's that? You know, and, and I love that. I love I, uh, this is why I always say that. And, and you can say what you want. My favorite character in this whole film is this Adrian Brody character. And it's not just because he's a director because uh, he's technically not. He's an actor. Um, but I love his character because essentially, man, it's like it's a weird representation of an artist. It's it's him saying, I'm going to stay. I'm going to live in this theater. These are my living quarters. The the makeup uh, uh, cuts my hair and shaves my beard. Uh, the costuming washes my you know my clothes, and his wife leaves him, and it's very amicable. And the wife leaves him because she gets it. She gets it. She gets the artistic life. She just can't support it anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she gets it. You know that because she says, "Hey, in Act Three, Scene Five, she's gonna do A, B, and C. You should make her do this. You should explore." She gets it. You know she gets the lifestyle. But what I love about that is because he's exploring his own humanity and his own life through this play, he, it's more important for him to tell the story than to live his own life. You know, And if you think about it, you go back to the play itself, that's what Jason Schwartzman's character is being. It's more important for me to figure out who I am first before I try to implement anything on my kids. Uh, he has kids. The Adrian Brody character has kids. That much is said. Um, no, he's, they're left over there with uh, whatever, a babysitter or whatever. Um, and his life is still more in the theater. I have mm. to live here. But the most beautiful thing that I think, a beautifully tragic thing, is she says you should have her deliver the last line after she closes the door. Yeah. And, and he's like, okay, I, I'm going to need you to do it. I'm going to need you to do it. Because so that it, it, it almost, is, John Mayer has this great quote in one of his songs, which, which I think resonates with any artist, is he says, uh, the one I... The one I love the most said, uh, a broken heart is all you ever need. Because when you make art, that kind of fuels your art, right? When you write songs, when you make films, yep. yeah. like whatever impacted you lately in your life is kind of what's going to end up fueling your next project, right? For this character, it's like, I need you to walk away just like the character in the play walks away. And I need you to deliver the line so I know what that feels like so that I can inform my art. You know, he <laughs> says that to his wife. Yeah. And I just think that's... That's so. It's it's just how characters in this film are using art as a way to cope, mm -hmm. <laughs> as a way to un try to understand life. Um, whereas some people use uh, such a deep layered thing. Some people use science to try to figure out life. Yeah. Half of the characters in this film do. The other half oh, use like, uh, art. Tilda yeah. Tilda Swinton's character. Tilda Swinton's character. Yeah, like her whole uh, arc of just she's only a major scientist because at a very young age she like burned into <laughs> her eyes. Yeah. Like the image of, uh, of a, this of eclipse, eclipse yeah. and ever since oh, yeah. then she lives with she that, and now nice now it's just she's understanding it. She's like that affected me, and that's going to live with me forever. Might as well try to understand what does that mean? You know, where is it all going? Um, by the way, uh, do you have any, I guess, kind of like theories or ideas on like why a very intentional frame, but um, the director is shadow boxing, even though there's a punching bag right next to him. <laughs> Because there was a bunch of bag next to him. Yeah, there, it's yeah, right it next hanging. to him, and it's it's very clearly shown that yeah. like you look at the the shot, and there's like a punching bag there, and then he goes to this empty bar, and he's yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Kind I kind of like that, but I didn't see the bag. I, I have a couple of theories, but the, and because I was analyzing that when he was when he was doing it, the first one is as as a creative, your imagination has to has to be bigger than what's in front of your face. Uh huh. I think that's how you process as a creative. If you're writing a if you're writing a, a a film if you're writing a film about a lunchbox, you'll use a lunchbox to model, right? But you almost have to go deep in your brain on what this lunchbox is going to look like, what you want it to say, what you want it to do. I think the tangible thing is never what an artist uses. I don't think it's possible for an artist to use a tangible thing to because really. It's not about. It's training. not about the theme. Yeah. You don't think it's just as easy as it would be too hard to. No. Because that, that that it's a speed punching bag. So it's, yeah. It's a, no. Too loud for the play? No, no. I don't think... So I just think his, he's too much of a creative. Mm, okay. I just think he's too much of a creative that he has to imagine it. He has to envision what's going on as opposed to having it hit you in the face. 
I don't think it's about the thing as much as it about what the thing represents. Yeah, not okay. And that's my second theory. I agree with that. The second theory for me is, if you notice, he's doing this when he opens the curtains, yeah. right? He's sitting in the bath or standing in the bathtub kind of area, right? Yeah. That's where Midge, is Midge? Midge uh, yeah. Scarlett Johansson's Midge, character Midge. goes through her biggest arcs. The pills, the overdosing, the wanting to kill herself, the existential questions of, did it matter to you? Does it matter? Does any of this matter? That's an emotional fight. That's where she's going through her bouts. Yeah. Not once in this whole picture do you see a boxing scene. Never. The boxing doesn't exist in this picture. Yeah, sure. But the emotional f combat does. So I think that's a better representation of what him doing this, going back and forth, mm. like, oh, these are the beats. Boom. Tip for tap. Punch for punch. Especially, like, when her character's in the train cart, mm. you know, and he's, okay, option one of you're pissed off, option two of you're okay, option three of you're cool and collected. Um, the, the other character's not even present, but his words are triggering her. Yeah. You know? His words are this constant back and forth. Oh, he said that. Oh, he meant this. And then you end up realizing, like, she caves. They go, they, bla they, they stop where they stop on the train, and then they take the first flight out two, year, two hours back to the, the play location. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that, I, that, to me, that's what I picked yeah. up on it, is just, like, this emotional combat is... I, any director will tell you that's what you're constantly... Because it's not in, about the object. Yeah. No, no, absolutely Yeah, not. yeah, when you're uh, acting out in any situation yeah. or when, when you're doing anything in art, it, it's never about that. Like, I mean... You know what's great about that? Hmm. Schwartzman's character in the play... <clears throat> The photographer, she says, I need you to use your anguish. I need you to use your, your sorrow or whatever, right? Agreed. And he thinks that's meant to say, oh, I have to upplay this. He's not an actor. He doesn't know. But he breaks a bulb and he tosses shit and he does this. Yeah. And that's not what she wants. That's not what she needs. She needs the vulnerability. She How needs... How catch the shit? Okay. It, <laughs> it's weird, man. That is it's, good. It's that this, is good. The, again, I, well, this, everyone, when I watched that scene, I was like, okay, you kind of overdid it. <laughs> Because makes, he's not an actor, so right? Yeah, he doesn't know what that is. Yeah, to him, it's, oh, I have to act. I yeah, have to yeah, perform. Yeah. And to her, it's, how real can I make this character to myself? Oh, I have to pretend that I do swallow. I have to paint a black eye because I have to feel what she's feeling. Oh, it's um, so interesting. You know. I love uh, Scarlett's character and yeah. what she kind of goes through uh, in the play. Again, it's that weird kind of like different layers. But in the yeah. play, her character going through this. I, I'm doing this because I like playing these characters because I think one day I'm going to end up like them and I'm trying to process <laughs> how that's all yeah. going to feel. Like she says, I, I feel like the reason I want to be a yeah. character that's like slumped over a bathtub with uh, sleeping pills like on the floor is because that's how I think I'm going to be found one day. But she doesn't understand why. And she's like, and, and I know that I love my kids and I know that I want to have a connection. I do I have, have a connection, time with them. but I, I also don't know what this means. And I, I also mean, think when she God. when they talk to her, they have a yeah. really really key moment across the window, right? Yeah, um, which is their safe space almost, right? They talk to each other, and she says she finally thinks she deduces both of them, and she says, "Oh, I get it. We have an emotional connection because we're just two hurt souls." who don't want to face their pain because we just don't want to. Mm -hmm. We'd rather encounter something else that's going to take us out of that for a little while. And his character's like, uh-huh. Uh, like, he agrees, but he doesn't even want to explore that right. principle. Yeah. He says, can we change the subject? Yeah. You know, because it's, it's, that, it's that, that, that thing where, like, yeah, we know we're doomed. And that's why he said, I hate how the alien was looking at us. Like, we're a doomed species. Like, we're fucked. Because in some notion, we are. And they accept that. And, and there's this just, like... Do you ever wonder, right? Do you ever wonder, you know, an alien race comes to Earth, and not so much in the little dicky way, right? But they come to Earth and they're like, damn, man, these people don't got it figured out. Shit. I feel sorry for them. Let's not invade them. Like, this is too easy. These people are so harmless and vulnerable. <laughs> but we try to act like because we're a, an intelligent species that we know what we're doing. We don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Nobody knows what they're fucking no, doing. No, and then every... Uh, I love... Everybody's reaction. Oh my god, there is a boxing like. Yeah, yeah, yes. it's very yeah, much uh, clear on the side. Um, every character's reaction is so interesting, yeah. and uh, I, I want to explore more the monologue of. Um, oh, I keep forgetting the name of the guy. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright, uh, because where he's like saying his whole life yeah. story essentially in the yeah. three different in, microphones in, 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 the, in the book, <laughs> um, chapter one. Yeah. yeah, but like uh, when you notice when the alien comes out and the way everybody reacts. Everybody is reacting the way that they're supposed to react. The photographer takes the picture. He's the general. He loads his gun and uh -huh, like prepares uh -huh. to shoot. And everybody's just, again, 
playing into their role because that's the only control that we kind of do have. But the ones that aren't are the ones that are admitting what, at one point or another in the story that they don't have it figured out. Why yeah. did the alien pose? Why did he pose? Pose. Because he's smarter than you. He knows what the thing around your neck is. He knows what you're trying to do. <laughs> okay. I think. Like, yeah. I think they're coming down this like... These guys are cute. I just want to study this thing. I'll bring it right back. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not here to destroy your world. Um, and what's more is like most people will probably think, "What does this message mean?" They wrote a hieroglyphic or whatever on the back of the the, the asteroid. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, if you notice uh, the way the character is built, um, he just has big eyes, so he can perceive you. Yeah, he can understand Quicker. you, but he can't talk to you. Also, his head, right? Yeah. He's he's a brain. <laughs> like his head is a brain. It's it's a full on brain, right? He's yeah. he's, he's he perceives everything, yeah. but you'll never get any interaction from him. He doesn't talk. He's completely like sheltered uh, from like having any contact with anybody else. So even if you wanted to talk to him, like, why are you here? What does this mean? Much like any situation I, in life, it's not going to give you an answer. Yeah, it's I just also not going to talk back yeah. to you. It's, not, it's just going to be there. That's why uh, I love the way that they construct him. Yeah, I just, also think he's the, the almost a visual representation of um, him. Like him processing the, the human thing that we say, they're more afraid of me than I am of them. He's not looking like, like he's gonna attack. He's not getting it. And he he's smart, right? He knows what the camera is, for instance. He knows what weapons are too. But the humans are more curious about this thing than they are threatened by it. Mm -hmm. Even like the the military when they're going through like the checklist of like. Oh, is he with the Russians or is he with uh, Red China? Uh, no, nah, it doesn't seem to be. Like, he didn't really have any representation <laughs> of that. And then they kind of go in deeper. Oh, well, maybe he's uh, he's uh, hostile or he does. Nah, it doesn't really seem like he that. He kind of took a rock. He kind of just took a rock. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's that process of, like, us trying to figure out beyond our understanding. and then, But we're not, we're not scared as much as we are curious. I think that's also a representation of death, right? Like, we're not. Oh everybody's scared of death. That's the number one guarantee in any human being's life is death. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest exploration, yeah. right? Like the, the biggest unknown that we all have to face in our life, it yep. doesn't matter who you are, is this notion of our own mortality yeah. and death. And, and some people choose to use religion to explain it. And they say like, oh, well, there's an afterlife and this is what happens. And they have this whole explanation, but we don't know. And then there's mm -hmm. people who are like, well, I just kind of don't believe anything. And when you die, you die. But even that, it's like, I still don't know what that means. Like, and and you it's, know, not so it's not reductive either. It's yeah. not like, well, I guess that's life and who cares? It's more like, man, I kind of want to know more about this life thing because I don't know all of it. I don't, I thought I knew all of it. Yeah. And the, which is why it's very curious with like the purity of a, of a child's spirit, right? They're praying to God. They're praying to a God. Not just the, the, the son of Schwartzman's character, but the little kids. The little kids. They're giving grace for their food and they're giving... And then they're giving grace to the alien. Because the biggest thing in your life be, uh, before the understanding was God. And now... And now it's something else. Now it's like, oh man, you know. Also, did you notice that like the daughters um, in like them doing witchcraft... Yeah. That's also another way that people like, you know, they try to take the mystery. Yeah. And even if it's not God, they believe that if they say these words a certain way yeah. and if you put things in yeah, a certain yeah, place yeah. and put spices or whatever, you'll be able to control the mystery. You'll be able love, to control the unknown. Yeah. And, you know, when uh, I love how those little girls process death, man. Yeah. I love how they process the death of their mom. Right. Like the 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 lot, oh. the, the, the kid, the, the, the son, he processes death like. Okay, I forgive you for withholding this information, but he's still grieving. Yeah. In his most logical way that he can possibly grieve. It isn't emotional until Tilda Swinton's character says, hey, I remember the loss of my mother 46 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I feel that. And that still hurts. And that still hurts. So he's, that makes sense to him. Oh, this is just going to hurt from now on. Okay. You know, where the little girls didn't. They don't even remember their grandpa. They just remember their scent. You know, do you really think they're going to remember their <laughs> they, mom in 10 years? No, they're they don't not know genuinely. What time is. Yeah, they don't know what 15 minutes are. Yeah. Uh, it's three. What did she say? 6,200 hours. Oh, yeah. Um, they don't, they're, they're too young to process death, but they know what it is. They know that this person is no longer here. How do I cope with that in my oh, even, three, five, and six, however old they are, you know? Even like that whole, uh, uh, I love how the mother's ashes are in a Tupperware. Yeah. Because even like having to process that, like somebody, a loved one or, or somebody who dear to you, all this emotional value, all their thoughts, ideas, phrases, everything is now just this powder in a Tupperware. Yeah. And that's what you're, you're left with to kind of just exist on that. That's just mom. And then if they take it back, well, it's just still Tupperware also, like, powder. Like, I think it's a weird rep representation of family, right? Th me. Yeah. Right. In my 
writer brain, I would have probably put him in a in a film can, in a photography film can, <laughs> right? Because yeah. that meant more to him. But this person was so much more. She represents the family. Who uses Tupperware? Moms use Tupperware Mom. to take so you can take your lunch or so you can save the leftovers. That's her kind of like that's what they're losing this the sense of a mother, right? This thing that they're going to carry you with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, by the way, I love, I love what they did with her character, man. Like that's that balcony scene is probably my favorite scene. Oh my God. Yeah. And the whole picture, um, you know, we're going to delete it. The deleted scene. <laughs> the deleted and they, they read their lines of like, you say this, I say this, you say this. And it's fucking Margot Robbie, by the way, just, just Margot Robbie, just Barbie popping up out of nowhere. What did you say? Once uh, it's over, I wish they would have kept this scene. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like Oh, yeah. he was asking like, why'd they cut the scene out? And oh, like, oh, the, the runtime, the runtime, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, which um, it's an interesting thing on life too, right? Like, why is somebody's life cut short? Well, I mean, their runtime ran out. The runtime ran out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> no, nah, dude. I feel like if you really look at this film, yeah. every little ounce, every little yeah. like speck, it's it's all this this also, grandiose. Metaphor, but you know? this Here's character. My big question then. Yeah. Yeah. Has Wes? confirm this or no is this, this? boy no and he, that's what a good filmmaker does yeah. he doesn't he really did make this film to no. just be this much like the asteroid this thing that just kind of sits there in mystery and then it left for everybody else to just kind of look at it and wonder like what does it mean and you're never going to have control over <laughs> what the film means because even the characters in the film didn't know what it means so what you're left with is how do I look at it may and I, that's it Go for may it. I make a point yep I'm like Men in Black too when he's trying to connect all the dots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really want to see that behind this curtain. Yeah, it's just all little like <laughs> yeah. freaking pictures. Think about this for a second. I'm looking. Whenever we see an asteroid, just humans, right? It, f- physically, aesthetically, it's a void. There's no more land where land used to be, right? Mm-hmm. And we always try to deduce what happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is what killed the dinosaurs. Oh, this is. This is some puzzle piece that we're yeah. missing that we claim that we found. This killed grandma. Uh, is she okay? She's going to be okay. No, it? it's an asteroid. <laughs> and then on the, on the cover, right, we have these people looking down at the asteroid, trying to figure it out. I think the asteroid represents the void of life, right? The, the void that we're constantly trying to find. That's I just amazing. realized that okay. if you look, everybody's looking in a different yes. direction. Like, <laughs> she's looking up, he's looking down. Yeah. And everybody's pro- processing this differently, right? Yeah. Um, that's good. I think that's ultimately the, the representation of this all. It's like life's one big desert. And then as humans, we discover an asteroid and we're like, oh, meaning, meaning. We found meaning. And that's like, well, what does it mean? I don't know. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? Yeah, it's just like this, this is what this visual representation is. Anyways. By the way, um, rounding back again to other reasons why I feel this film was snubbed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking about production design, which Austin <sighs> brought yeah, up earlier absolutely. that uh, in the production design, um, it was up for the critics' choice, right? Critics' choice, yeah. Yeah. For production design? For production yep. design. And the crazy thing is that I heard, okay, so this is all, this wasn't filmed in Arizona, Nevada, or anywhere in the United States. Spain. It was filmed in Spain because there's a desert location in Spain where the land is perfectly flat <laughs> and there is nothing. There's no mountains. There's no nothing. None of that. Just there's flat. nothing. Yeah. So Wes thought that that would just be a wonderful place to express this isolation and void and then whatever he puts there is just kind of like that's just what you're left with so yeah. in that you see uh, the behind the scenes that they built the mountains they built every cactus that's there uh which all goes into the masterful nature of yeah. west just crafting yeah, no, no, yeah, everything that, that you see i get but um do you know the name of the city where they shot Ooh, oh I, um, um barcelona ch- something with a c uh Cincinnati. No, no. it's like S- 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 Sonia. Saskatchewan. Sh- 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 Sonia or Sichonia or Ch- Chinoni or something. Chinchon Madrid. Chinchon. 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 I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. But Chinchon. it's just outside of Madrid. Okay. Wow. Outside of Madrid. Hmm. Dude, and then um, dedication by the whole cast and crew. And Wes has always done this, especially since um, mm-hmm. the Darjeeling Limited, that he makes all the cast and crew stay together uh, oh, yeah. to form the sense of unity oh, yeah. and connection. Oh, uh, yeah. Brian Cranston that. talks about yeah, that. How, like, and- He's in the film for maybe a total of 10 minutes. But you have to be there the whole <laughs> you time. You have to be there the whole time. They're like Matt Dillon, too. Matt Dillon was in there for what, Dude, two then, scenes. Uh, it's interesting. It's two interesting scenes. this uh, notion that he says, no, everybody eats together, everybody sleeps together. Yeah. And he, he's always done that with uh, the hotel um, from Grand Budapest. Yeah. He just keeps everybody together, and that's yep. why this atmosphere is so interesting. But, I mean, yeah, the, the dynamic and all the that. The actors refer to great. it as being this like artistic summer camp. 
You know, like, I, like they go out to, I mean, how I odd that, like, like that. Uh, Brody's character yeah. <laughs> sleeps on the stage and yeah. how yeah. autobiographical that, yeah. you know, Wes, wherever he's filming, he, will live you, in that you, space. he lives in that space yeah. until the film's over. Uh, I, I, I forget which film, uh, which actor said it, but uh, Wes does that, too. He's there. He's like, oh, yeah, he's he's there. He's, he's, he's Look, I'm not immersed. taking anything about Wes Anderson. Like, he's awesome. Yeah. He's one of the first guys that I saw, like, I love when everything's symmetrical. Like, he's yeah, the perfect yeah. definition of, like, oh, this is these color palettes and everything. This is going to be a beautiful framing right here. I just think, like I said, I just think there's so much coming at you. There is. And I, it definitely deserves a second or third watch. But you wouldn't like him to explore a little bit outside of, like I, I, I said, the dollhouse. Because here's, here's, here's the thing, dude. Here's the thing. No, because he's 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 earned it. No, I he's, know he's earned his style, right? I know, I know, I know this is style. very reductive, but like it's just look at like um Pablo Picasso. You wouldn't look at him towards the height of his um No, artistic, people hated his uh, Yeah, yeah, towards <laughs> uh like well I'm saying his creative peak. Yeah. And say I wish he did stuff that was more normal or realism. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to be disrespectful. No, like, no, 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 no. But it's, it's a good it question to pose. Saying, here's here's the problem. I'm here's the here's the issue. Uh, guys like Wes, guys like Marty, guys like Nolan, these guys have earned the right to explore artistic grounds that haven't been explored before, mm -hmm. and 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 explore it at whatever style they see fit for the picture, right? For sure, they've earned that right. For sure, my whole thing is, I, I think the Wes's of the world are are exploring notions or exploring cinema. That's not meant to be palatable for the common viewer. I think he's making it for people who really want to sink their teeth into something. Okay. And I think I already know a couple of these questions, but we always talk about this in the podcast. Yeah. How did it move? Or what was... Oh, like the medium? No, no, no. Um, how did this move it forward cinema? How did, how did it... Mm. I think what was uh, what was different? What did I know that I don't know they did they created a new something for it? They uh, well, oh no, was that Killers only? Or? That yeah, was yeah, uh, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. They Oppenheimer. created a new both, uh, both film style. Both, yeah. and, Here's and what I'll I'll say, and I, this, I, I this is where I've interpreted Wes's current trajectory because mm -hmm. again I've seen uh, his filmography. I've seen where he's grown yeah. as a director, as a storyteller, and same with Week because you guys you you especially yeah. you you know you showed us a couple of his. I think where he's growing now, and, and uh, there's this uh, notion that, like, you know, why does anybody write uh, a book over a movie or uh, a movie over a play yeah. or, or make a play instead of a painting? And the idea is, is that every artistic medium that we use to describe life and, you know, what the experience is, yeah. um, they all have their strengths. When you read a book, you're able to be there with the character's inner monologue and go through exactly what they're going through in that moment internally. Things that, for sure, in a in uh, again in a um, in a play or a film you couldn't do. And in a play, the the uh, appeal to a play over a yeah. book or a movie is that it's happening in front of you. This is life. They're right. they're they're performing <clears throat> on a stage in front of you. So everything that happens to them is real because it's just physically happening in front of you. And then with a film, <laughs> you're able to dive in to those intimate, silent, quiet moments of um, a person's, like, reaction or Absolutely. tensions. And yeah. you're able to be right there on those beats. I think that Wes is trying to explore how do we combine the strengths of every medium all into one. That's why now yeah. you, you see his films... There's bits of stop motion, and especially in this new uh, the short series, there's bits of stop motion everywhere. Bits of theater. There's these uh, bits of theater. There's bits of like uh, the cut-ins that you could only get in film, like the extreme close-ups or like the pull-aways. These camera movements with he's um, using he's using traditional, he's he's taking traditional film format tools, like a cut-in, like a close-up, like a dolly, like a dolly and like a dolly out. He's taking these things restructuring them, de deconstructing them, and reconstructing them in a new medium like theater, like stop motion. He's, oh, okay. he's deconstructing the, the norm of what we perceive as cinema um, and saying, hey, like that thing, I really like it, but the way Marty uses close-ups, I don't want to use it that way. I want to use it this way. Yeah. And I think it's a new exploration of the subject I'm covering. And I mean, uh, a lot of that also goes to uh, his DP, Robert Yeoman, that... Uh, creating this visual world because 
yeah now it's like if you if you see uh especially the shorts and i know that mm. this one felt like i love your description but like wes just kind of jerking off in front of a mirror it's so wesian yeah. um, i felt i felt that way dude about french dispatch upon the first viewing and then it be, very quickly became like my second favorite film of this okay uh, I, I, but wait wait yeah, what, one, one thing okay, I, I do have a take on on your question my perspective is what's more american what's more human what's more american than the everyman right this is ni- nuclear family 1950s midwestern america right um what's more american than hum- than apple pie quote unquote right yeah this is these are these people it's a visual representation of the everyman right so so that people who are watching this at first glance can say okay i kind of know that character i kind of know what i want that character to be i kind of know who that character is and then he's flipping it on the edge and saying there's there's more you know there's more than what you think the midwest western american is no no for sure and all his films do that yeah i'm just saying like i'm i'm going to put it into the perspective as what an actor yeah some people get stuck like Kramer. He, that's all he ever did. That I think that he's getting stuck on that. Like, we already know what we're showing up to. Like, with Marty or uh-huh, Steven Spielberg, uh-huh. Shinder's List to Ready Player One. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know, I understand Ooh. he's in a tour. That's his style. I understand. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like most of like, those jump cuts that you're saying, that those things I that think, he does, I they're think getting w- a little tiring. I think when a filmmaker gets there, uh-huh. it's because they're not done exploring that facet. Okay. Like, the way I, the example I can give you is Federico Fellini, right? Federico Fellini n- never made a picture that wasn't somehow reminiscent of a circus. Okay. All of his pictures were. Okay. Eight and a half was the circus of cinema and art. Uh, you know, uh, uh, La Dolce Vita, the circus of paparazzi. And, you know, it's it, that's he never left that world. Uh, uh, the, there's a film called a, a, a Fellini Satyricon that literally dis- explores the underworld of Rome and how these are just like these freaks, these circus freaks of people. No, 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 I know. You know, the underbelly of, of, of the world. With, uh, with uh, Guy Ritchie. Right. He's always in London. He's always doing I those don't, mobs. I think I people that. don't leave that world until they feel like they're done exploring it. Okay. And for instance, I've, never th- I've never thought about it like that. Somebody like Marty, right? Marty will make the quote-unquote gangster picture because he thinks there's so much to say about humanity in that world. Mm-hmm. Right, I think Wes thinks there's so much to say about humanity in this current style. I think by by and it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I just let me ask you something. I think it's also very autobiographical as an actor. Mm-hmm. I think for Wes, it's very autobiographical on why he's doing this. As an actor, when you accept the role, right? Genuinely, do you always get it? Do you always get the role? Do you always get the character? Like, get it, or do I understand the character? Do you understand the character? Mm, that's a good one. Do you always, Obviously, like, do you always, like, I know who this is. I'm doing this. Or do you, know, you yeah, do it as, but, as an exploration? Yeah. Uh, you get all variety of it. Yeah. Most, but yeah, it's, uh, whether you do or you don't, most of the time. Well, most of the time, yeah, you got to read it a couple times, and you're like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, or want? you have to play it to get it, right? You have to, like, this character is so interesting okay, to me. I trying to go. I don't, I don't get it, but it's so interesting to me that I have to play him. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, what Wes is doing, um, which is the narrative of the film, right? I don't know why, but I have to explore this. And the exploration, is more, that. And the exploration is more important and, than yeah. me and more fascinating than, than the, the destination. The journey is much more fascinating yeah, than yeah, the destination. Yeah, yeah. The last time yeah. I remember yeah. you talking about a role that was kind of like that was um, when you did the one where it's the short film, but the guy knows that this is just a short film. Yeah. Oh, yeah, five minutes and, of existence. And I remember you uh, explaining, like, how you would play it a certain way. The director was like, no, you got you to gotta, you gotta bring it back. Like, it's not yeah. your, your character is just very straight-faced and stoned. And then when I saw it, I mean, it all came across, like, really, really well. <laughs> yeah, same way I was but, like, okay. but it was one of those where, like, you had to almost allow yourself not to fully understand what he was going for and just kind of like played in that way so you could get to that final destination. Also, right, right, right. I'm not saying this is... Was that a, was that a comparison to what this film is or... What? Kind of, yeah. Kind of, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely, right? It's, it's Absolutely. The, the, the self-awareness of what you're currently doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say, I don't know how you guys feel. I'm, I'm kind of split in the middle with this film in the sense of most of the time I feel with a, with a complex film like this, you have to be at a certain point in your life to even process it. I'm understanding that. You yeah. you are, or you were, right? Yeah. You were in this complex part of your life where you were like... Yeah, I like that. Something about I'm it. I'm split because I think this is ongoing. This principle of this film mm-hmm. doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. I think as human beings, we're, we're constantly exploring. 
So I think at any given point in your life, you could connect to this picture. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think it clicks until you're like, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck is this yeah. about? And then you get to the point where like, kind of like the last scene in eight and a half. What is all this craziness? I don't know, but I'm going to dance. You know, like, it, it's just... And, and I mean, no, no, you know. I, I'm not saying that I didn't have fun. It's a good yeah, film, yeah. but no, I no, just no, no. feel like I left... I, the, I left... I left... I, I, I got out of it. Yeah. Like, I came in. Like, mm. okay, that's a Wes Anderson film. Mm. It's a good I, story. Oh like, uh, complex. I'm complex. I need to rewatch it because yeah. of the story. I missed a couple I things. I will say, I felt... But it was just like... Like I said, I felt the same way the first time I screened it. I've, I've seen this frame. I've seen this. Yeah. But is it kind of like the experience of listening to like a smash mouth song <laughs> that's not their most popular one and you're like okay that was another smash mouth song okay is is it that feeling you're where it's him. like you're losing him scott that's that's right. no but no no no, not, no 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 not, 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 not no, no, smash no, no. mouth I, but, I, I you know. saw where he was going with no, it no but yeah, like yeah. like when you hear uh you know all star and you're like okay cool like it's i like all star and it's then enjoyable. you hear like one of their other songs and you're like Okay, it's just more of that, but it's not the greatest right. hits. It's just kind of like, 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 yeah, you do it, and then after the song's over, you're not really gonna think about it any further. And, and by the way, like, I, I have, really good. I yeah. have this conversation with Sandra all about the time. Smash Mouth. Yeah, about Smash Mouth. It's crazy. <laughs> we have posters. No, about it's an ongoing about how I like, like for instance, Austin and I get into these conversations too because I like I love the Beatles. Right, they're they're my favorite band. Yeah, we all wonder why still. Right. Well. <laughs> Most pe- that's because most people, most of the common kind of individuals simps. who don't who do, simps who don't no simps or something yeah, yeah, else. No, no, simple. Be, be, it's simpletons. simpletons. There you go. <laughs> they don't they get, take the Beatles, the Beatles at face value. They take the poppy songs oh, that I were see popular. Where you're going with it. Yeah. For me, it's the B sides. Yeah. The B sides are always going to be deeper. Oh yeah. I know. Always going to be deeper. And that's what I'm saying. I need to rewatch it. Yeah. But it was just kind of like. This is such I like a complex. It when it's like Steven Spielberg is like, oh, yeah. shit, ET. Here's the thing: Spielberg is an A side, man. Spielberg's an A side. I don't care how you paint it. Even Spielberg like, is an A side. Even his most like, like in depth film, like The Fableman, it's yeah. still very and much an A side. Even to give him yeah. credit, I like him so much that I was expecting, like, okay, like maybe he already perfected this craft. Yeah. I just okay. I guess this is kind of the way I'm trying to say. It. I need to see the next level to this. Oh my god! Mm. I know, dude. I need to okay. rewatch it. The one right before this was um, French, Dispatch. French, French Dispatch. Dispatch. He took all the best... Out. Yeah. In French Dispatch, he was exploring a bunch of different ways to communicate style. The black and white um, animation, um, use of camera movement, uh, use of treating the set like a stage. Um, he got all the best elements of that. And I'd say like the actors that he worked with for the first time, like uh, Jeffrey Wright, and took those good elements and then just yanked it over and made it into this one solid film like Asteroid City and then just expanded more. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's where I say like, if it watched like, um, I like that. Cause I, watch I would his, watch his early ones and then watch the one he did right after that. And you'll see where it's like, he, you could see, Oh, I like this camera movement. Now I want to play I with it further. Saying, yeah. And then if you watch this one and then watch his shorts, it's the same my, thing. It's my this, philosophy. Like, let me take the great things of this film. Yeah expanded even my, more. my philosophy See, with, I, I with appreciate how obsessed you are because you know those stuff and yeah I, I can get obsessed so i appreciate that, that yeah, I, yeah. well that, that's the thing right I, I i've said this time and time again about filmmaking you learn the rules so you can break them right right so right, right, right. i think the early filmography of wes is his discovering his voice right true learning the, ro- the rules learning how to use dollies and learning how to use uh, um trucking and tracking and and then it's being like, okay, I'm going to learn it and use it quote unquote properly. And then I'm going to flip it on the script and use it in something like this and break the rules because now it's become an exploration. It hasn't become a defined structure, you know? And, and I think this is a prime example of that. He's, he's learned the rules. He's played by the rules. All right. So a question for both of you. Yep. What's the top, what's the number one at the top of the list that you liked about this film that, oh, oh okay. No, because you, you liked everything. That you thought moved the medium forward? I think that... Because um, I, I, I'm understanding what everything, what everything, everything you guys are saying. Like, I just don't understand. I'm like what understanding. moved it forward? Yeah, I'm not understanding what you guys... Gave a shit? There, okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm not giving a shit. There's a... So look at a... I know this is kind of weird. I'm going to bring it back a bit a little bit. Um, look at J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. Mm-hmm. You know, those films. And I don't know if you remember the, the period when they first came out 
and uh, they gave us these really interesting shots with anamorphic, these lens flares mm. shooting in, and then J.J. Abrams used that style and then put it into uh, his other Star works. Star Trek came out after Super 8, right? Because he, he, yeah. he kind of learned it. No, on... Super 8 was... No, Super first. 8 was after. Oh, okay, well, in yeah. Super 8, you see it with much more yeah, intention. Yeah, oh, okay, you see okay. it with more intention, but yeah. um, he learned uh, both with, like, the cinematographer and, you know, the lighting team and all that, yeah. how to create those kind of shots that felt futuristic and gave the the like camera texture where it's throwing the audience in and he really liked that and really wanted to explore that and then what happens is that <laughs> a lot of people took those technically flashy things and, and then started throwing them everywhere then you see a lot of like yeah, people yeah. when they do b-roll for like their instagram page it has all these lens flares or and different like, things like going even there. on the ma- on the macro level um um the DC guy, Jesus Christ, how many? Oh, um, Zach, Sh- Zach Snyder. Zach Snyder. The Zach Snyder will take those things and use them in this. Yeah. Kind of almost pointless. And, and I feel or- like uh, you look at that where they were moving the medium forward by showing a new technical way to uh, put flash into a film. And then I think there's people like Wes that are using flash meaning uh the way that the the film cuts the stage is moving apart characters popping in and that popping out and all that, that. Was fun, yeah and um he's adding in these new elements with intention where it's not just flash to be flashy if you watch his new films they're not just these uh gimmicky shots that are meant to like kind of confuse you for the sake of it being like, look, I'm Wes Anderson. I can do whatever I want. Okay. Yeah. I think everything that he's doing is meant to communicate these ideas that last a lot longer and hit a lot deeper than uh, a regular story being told. Because yeah. if you try to tell this story in, uh, let's say, a traditional way. Well, we, we talked about recently um, Zone of Interest, right? Yeah. How this was this big concept picture. Okay? Yeah. It's a big concept picture. Either hit or the, the, Yeah. Well, it was just like, oh, man, like if you really explored it cinematically... You could have posed so many questions on humanity, on why humans are the way are, why war exists, why some people mean less to people than other people. Like you could have explored so much thematically and mm-hmm. conceptually, but you didn't execute cinematically. So therefore, you didn't pose any questions. You know, um, Wes very is, true. Wes is using cinematic elements to pose questions, and I'd say he's even uh, doing this thing where he's incorporating other art styles. Yeah, again, like theater. Uh, because we've seen films about theater. We saw, uh, um, oh my God, uh, All That Jazz. Oh, yeah. And we see the way that they film theater. Mm-hmm. And, or we've even seen uh, like the, the stage recordings of like Hamilton or other plays. Yeah. But even that doesn't have the same weight in yeah. the story or when you as a viewer watching it as when you're seeing those theater elements brought into Wes Anderson film, well, what, you know? Yeah, and my, my answer is much more simple than that, dude. My answer is, is the law is right on all, by, by all accounts. Uh, my answer is uh, Wes has found a new way to explore the human condition, a fresh take. And a fresh take doesn't always necessarily mean fresh technical elements mm, okay. it just means fresh exploration tell me it, just as an example not a, a west film not in its stylings think about the last 30 years of cinema mm-hmm. what film can you say like explores the human condition the way this does oh, there's only one i can think of so far is all that jazz and that's probably 40 years at this point what was that uh blue velvet the one that you showed us the one about uh wait blue velvet uh, no, the Lynch well, film or the enemy, perfect blue perfect oh blue. perfect blue yeah. Mm. Yeah. fresh take right yeah, yeah explores the human condition asks you the questions that you tend to ask yourself about life and existence and why it all matters right um, I think that something like the French Dispatch or French Dispatch didn't quite do that it explored the human condition on a much more concentrated plane which to us essentially was death and protest and why we should oppose the norm and stuff like that. That's what the French Dispatch was exploring for me. Asteroid City pushes it, pushes the medium forward on the exploration of the human condition, period. And, and each, man, it's so interesting. The, each, each character, each set of characters, rather, whoever you group together, are a different part of life. The kids are the innocence, right? The discovery of purpose, the discovery of love. Um, the, the Jason Schwartzman, um, Scarlett Johansson pair are 
the rediscovering of love after being so cynical, after life has made you cynical because, well, one husband beat me, the other one left me, and in this case, well, one wife died on me, you know? Uh, the, the, the rediscovery of love through, through grief. Yeah. Then you keep going and you see, like, the Steve Carell character. What purpose did the Steve Carell character use? Commerce. Yeah. Commerce, right? Commerce through life. There's no, by the way, Bill Murray was supposed to play that character, just FYI. Mm. That, that's the character he was going to play. And there is a Bill Murray commercial yeah. uh, talking about the fake play Asteroid City. Yeah. And this is the second time Steve Carell replaces Bill Murray in a film. Really? The first time was Little Miss Sunshine. That was supposed to be what? Bill Murray. It's Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. That's crazy. So, again, commerce, right? The parents getting together, thinking that all they're talking about is the government. Right. And and why? And, and they can't take our rights. How long can they hold us here? That's what people talk about is like which rights they think are being taken away from them at this point in adulthood. Um, and, and everybody's exploration of the human condition is, is so singular. OK, no. Yeah. But at the same time, interconnected. That's how we're interconnected, interconnected. That's how every human is interconnected. If you feel you don't have anything in common with your peer, with somebody you don't know. Everybody is asking themselves the same questions. How do I get by? No, yeah, okay. How do I survive? That's good. No, no, and I love that. I really love that. I guess now I'm understanding. That's me pushing cinema forward. And I'm understanding that now Wes Anderson's kind of storytelling, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out the answer, which I thought I knew is like, why? And you keep saying like, he didn't submit. I'm trying to understand why it wasn't submitted or even like really recognized. That's because the Oscars are more commerce nowadays than anything else. Okay, I'm thinking it's okay. What did this one didn't have have that Killers of the Flower Moon didn't have or, or Oppenheimer didn't have? I think, and I'm not trying to be like uh, no, you can be the audience is stupid or whatever. I just think it's like no, um, it is. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because the audience can be very smart. The problem is the audience. It, the think, audience wants you wants it was to too much. Dude, the audience, the thing about the thing about cinema is this. The thing about cinema that most people fail to understand. Most people who look see our podcast and, and think, look at these pretentious fucks. They think there's so much more to this simple little There's a bunch movie. of us out there. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But the thing that people fail to understand about cinema is that typically, and I and I think we talked about this in I forget which film, whether it was American fiction or or past lives, I don't remember which one. Uh-huh. Is that the, the thing about good cinema? Great cinema, but the cinema that surpasses our understanding. That's why I wanted. Okay, is that I, I was kind of like is that I don't want to say what's like, immediately palatable. Audiences like to feel like they're putting the puzzle pieces together. For that's sure. what an audience likes to feel. Mm-hmm. I like to feel like oh, I figured it out. Oh man, that's why it's so good. But it's not until you 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 encounter a film that blows your mind so much that you're like. What the fuck was this? Did it mean yeah, anything? Yeah, and I love how and, he's and, and, talking and, and, about and it. And Lynch, man. Lynch will play that play with that jump rope more often than anybody. And he admits, I'm exploring something. I don't know if it fucking means anything. Yeah. You know, when you watch a Lynch film, you're watching, you're going in thinking, I don't know and what this means. Which love, yeah. yeah. And then you start processing, well, this part of it means this to me. This part of it means this to me. Um, and not just Lynch. I mean, Fellini's the same way. And, and uh, all these, no, these even filmmakers. Seeing, uh, people like Astor, where, I mean, Astor's exploring yeah, uh, that's another one, um, dread and yeah, horror, horror in a way that's never been explored before. And I mean, but Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon, man, they're a topic that people can digest fairly easily. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Oppenheimer is linear, right? Yeah. The storytelling of it all is not linear. Yeah, I was about to say. The storytelling is not linear. The subject matter is. Yeah. I know who Robert J. Oppenheimer was. I know how important he was to humanity. I know, that I know the how bomb controversial. Yeah. I know how controversial his life was. Boom. I can I can use the question of existentialism in, in life and pose it in this singular topic that people are gonna understand. Same thing with Killers of the Flower Moon. We celebrate Thanksgiving, right? We know what, what this means. We know what, what uh gent- um uh, uh, genocide. Genocide, genocide is. Yeah. We know what genocide is. We celebrate it, right, as a people. We know, no matter what side you're on, you know whether to celebrate the pilgrims or the Indians. Right, right. Killers of the Flower Moon's Palette, it's digestible. It's very digestible. It's not easy to digest, but it is very digestible. Right, right. Something like Asteroid City is not easily digestible. Yeah. That's the difference. And By I the way, think... Okay. Oh, no, I was just going to say that uh, what did win this year, because Wes did get an award. Right. Short. Uh, yeah, it was, was his short. 
<laughs> it's like half the trophy. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, but Wes is now an Oscar winner. Yeah. I know I made that joke, but he's an Oscar, Oscar winner. winner. No, yeah, he is an Oscar winner, and I mean, that is something that I mean... That's it, something that Guy Ritchie can't say. Well, that's something no... <sighs> don't worry, man. That's something yeah. that Scorsese can barely say, so... <laughs> I know. What does that all mean? No, what does but, it all hey, let's be honest. Like, in 20, 30 years, you know, after Marty's been gone for a while, you know there's going to be an award that in his name... Yeah. Oh, they yeah. should. Um, and, and by the way, the, the filmmakers who get first. those things, the David O. Selzer, well, David O. Selzer is more in the vein of like a Spielberg, but the the, the filmmakers who, who tend to surpass the Sayajit Rays, the Federico Fellinis, the Kira Kurosawas were not digestible. No, were not yeah, easily was, digestible. You know what I mean? Word it like that. Yeah. I didn't want to word it like that. And no, just, no, 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 no. But it's good that you did. Like, it's good that you did because is it that's Kanye why. Is not that digestible. Huh? Somebody like Kanye. Jeez. <laughs> Honestly, but in 30 if I'm being, years, no. if I'm being honest, man, um, the more I grow as a cinephile, I don't care if you guys like that word or not. I genuinely don't give a shit. It just the more I grow as a cinephile, the more I grow as a as a as a film lover, um, because I think that's more important than being a filmmaker, because you're exploring life through cinema, yeah. and then you can inform your art to try to explore life even further. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't be an astronaut without being the kid at staring at the stars, you know? No, yeah, yeah. And I'm a and big fan of rewatching and yeah, figuring yeah. out stuff. No, and but... Not just one of those first and that's the only time I'm The watching. more I grow as, as, as a film lover, right? The more, the less I want to be a palatable filmmaker. The less I want the Oscar. Honestly, and I know that I know that's bullshit. I know people may call bullshit. No, it's always... Yeah. But the, the more... I'd rather be 90... And and make such impactful cinema that's gonna surpass my lifetime. Than to worry about I don't know what's an Oscar winner that we've all forgotten about the Hurt Locker or fucking Green Book. Green who Book, cares? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like who gives a shit? I'm gonna be thinking about Roma for my whole life than I am yeah, gonna be thinking yeah, about yeah. the Green Book. I think about so, La La Land more than I think about Moonlight. Well, yeah. I mean, quite honestly, right? I want to be the. I think I think as a storyteller, I'd rather choose the road less traveled. Yep. The Wes, the, the Marty. The, and Marty and Spielberg, they, they're they flukes, man. They're fucking anomalies. You know why? Yeah, yeah. Because of when they came up. They took over the studio system. They were the key filmmakers in their era, not because they wanted to be. They wanted to be the John Cassavetes. They wanted to be the, <coughs> the Roger Cormans. That's who they idolized. They were forced to save cinema yeah. because cinema was dying and they had to step into the studio role. It's not, it wasn't a, you know, it was, a, it was a choice to try to save cinema. Um, which is why that era of cinema is so fucking good, man. These blockbusters, these these uh, these Godfathers, and the, like these these films were, were were pivotal because they were both blockbusters and not easily digestible cinema. No, right? no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those guys kind of fell into that throne, but yeah. but they idolized the guys who who were were buried deep in film libraries. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 something that I've processed a long time that the road less traveled in cinema. Is the one much more fulfilling and the one that's really going to be, you know, archaeologists are going to, what's what's this? And it's going to tell a complex story of humans that's going to be processed and processed and processed. Like, it, let me put it to you this way. This is the last thing I'll say before we probably have to close out. I don't know where we've been at. But, yeah, my bad. No, I love it. I love it. Um, it's taken me, I don't know how many times to rewatch 2001 A Space Odyssey to be like, this is huge. I'm going to have to watch this thing every year of my life to understand a minute detail of it, right? Because uh, at first I was like, you, yeah. I was like, what the fuck is that? What are you doing? The I have a whole theory now, yeah, but yeah. yeah well, Kubrick, okay, I get it. Okay, it's this existential question. And, okay, 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 okay well, who cares? And then I watch it more and more and I'm like, holy shit, you fucking genius. This is huge. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than cinema. This is, you know... Um, and by the way, Schwartzman's character's beard and his voice was modeled after Kubrick, in case that's something you guys wanted to know. Really? Yeah. Really? He was trying to listen to voices, and Kubrick was the one that he heard the most, and then he even modeled his beard I did after. notice an accent change when we went from the play back yeah. to the behind the scenes. Yeah, so he was trying <laughs> to say, model Kubrick. That. Um, and think about Kubrick, right? Think about Dr. Strangelove, uh, How to Love the Atomic Bomb, right? Yeah. That's, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I, I when I think about 2001 A Space Odyssey, I think of it as this huge thing that's going to that's going to constantly always be listed as the top film of all time for many people. And it's creeping up my list, man, because it's, it's just big. It's just too Thank big. You. Hell it's yeah. just too big. However, Asteroid City is a, almost a bite-sized chunk of this, of like a 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's this. Okay. Okay. I will take 
five, six, 10, 20 viewings, but I know what they're exploring. The thing about 2001 A Space Odyssey is they don't know what they're exploring. They're, they're genuinely exploring the beyond, but on a level that we're not going to get to for thousands of years possibly, right? Yeah. Asteroid City is set in the past so that you can go back and say, oh, okay, they, they simplified this thing. They put it in. There's nothing around. There's no buildings. There's no cars. There's no nothing. Well, there is a car, but it's a desert. It's empty no, and even so that like I can a... focus on the fucking characters, much like a stage, right? A stage is there. It's flat. It's empty. It's a blank canvas. And even though the playwright in the film says, <coughs> well, what's the, the play about? And he's like, "Why well, Infinity, I guess, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But even that exploration of infinity is finite because yeah. we're all limited to our lives. Yeah. You only have your lifetime, however long that's going to be, to explore that. And Kubrick is exploring post-life, post the human decay, and when we go circle back around the moon again, you know what I mean? Uh, and I mean that facetiously. I don't mean like the yeah. actual moon. I mean like how many times are we going to circle the timeline? Um, and that's what Kubrick is exploring, like from the planet of the apes, from the, you know, all the way to this, the yeah. fucking... Um, what is the, the thing called? The, 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 the obelisk? Obelisk, the obelisk um, in the middle of the room, you know? Mon mon monolith. Or like that. Uh, I think it's obelisk. I mean, you both might be right. Was the point is, monolith? we can explore this like it's, it's, um, it's concentrated science. We can, we can explore humanity through an asteroid. Whereas Kubrick is, we can we, we're going to explore humanity through what we don't know, you know? I like um, and I, I, like I think that Wes Anderson's doing a great job of like, Oh, I'm going to explore humanity through a newspaper, French Dispatch. I'm going to explore humanity through an asteroid. I'm going to explore humanity through um, not being able to use your eyes to see, you know, which is the, the, the short picture. Um, it is monolith. It is monolith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, okay. yeah, I, I think that's the difference. I think hey, Asteroid okay. City I'm is on, this, is this, uh, a little bit more. this not palatable, but consumable, you know. Yeah. Where I've seen 2001 A Space Odyssey five, six, seven times, and I'm still like, what the fuck? I need to yeah. know, I need to see more. Where Asteroid City on the third, on my third screening, I'm like, oh, fucking beautiful. I get it, but I don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, I think that's, yeah. that's what's no, beautiful no, no. about this and picture. And I like movies like that. And I don't mean to deduce it. It's not oh, no, saying no. Kubrick's no, appearing no, like, I said, after my second meeting, I was like, I appreciate it more now. Mm. I want to see it again in like two months. Yeah, same. I want to see what else new I get oh, from it. Same, yeah, same. yeah, because sure. I picked That's up on same. so much more this time around than the yeah, first yeah, time yeah. I saw it. Yeah. And again, uh, yeah. And then all you said you've seen it what like six times? I've seen it like <laughs> six, seven times. Yeah. So this was your seventh viewing. Yeah. Wow. Um, and again, it's for where I'm at in my place in time and my own personal exploration of life and what that means and how I should be expressing that exploration of life. Um, it just spoke to my sensibilities because... Fuck yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's why I say I'm like split, man. It's whether where you're at in life right mm -hmm. now yeah. or this is a constant thing, the constant oh, yeah. cycle yeah. of humanity anyways. You know? Yeah. Well, any rating changes? 11. Mine probably did. I don't know. I don't want it to sound a bit of... What was it? 7.2? I'll go to... Uh, 7.8. Okay. Because I, st okay. I still need that second watch. Yeah, I think I think the second watch. Yeah. Uh, sit I, on I, it. Sit on it. Yeah, Wait a couple months. Wait a couple months and then go back. This is why I do this know. podcast, man, because yeah. I didn't realize a lot of stuff. Yeah, I do it because yeah. I, I got paid. I don't want to sound. I don't want to diminish <laughs> getting paid? <laughs> I'm at about just... a 9.1, 9.2. I've gone up just a little bit because I think, again, there's there's other cinema that blows yeah. my mind a little more, a little a little quicker. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to be a little more. Um, or it doesn't. it blows my mind and I don't know why. Yeah. And Asteroid City, I know why it blows my mind. You know, so I think there's just other I'm cinema that is. Yeah, I just think I got a permanent tattoo on my body of this film, <laughs> and to rate it anything less than like yeah, a, ten, yeah, yeah. a nine, it'd be <laughs> like, ah, oh, this this film's crazy. I got a tattoo. It's like a three, really. You know, I just <laughs> I don't know three, why. Three, well, then genuine question: Do you think Wes will ever get his Oscar? Yeah, for sure. But I feel like if he gets his Oscar, um, directing Oscar, by the way. Ah oh, man, it I just think, has the, Oscars, I think the Oscars need to evolve again before somebody like Wes wins an Oscar. I think it's I don't, just I don't be think when, the, yeah, I don't think the Oscars are are ready. I think it's gonna you be, uh, and I hope it's not. But um, like we just saw with this last year's Oscars, um, 
Hiro Miyazaki and uh, Boy and the Heron, this this uh, <clears throat> intense exploration of his own personal medium and his own mm. personal storytelling style. And again, this like swan song yeah, where yeah, yeah. Uh, that is like they're giving him an Oscar because he made a film that is the culmination of his so entire you, you work. You don't think Wes will get an Oscar until his swan song? No, I... I Again, I pray and hope he will. I mean, he got the one for the short, but I think he can get one for a feature, and I think he can get one for directing. But um, I, I feel like based on his trajectory and based on his last films, and again, every time I see his film, yeah. I'm always with the same question of, like, how is he going to go beyond this? And then, like, yeah. we just saw the shorts recently, and that blew my mind. I, have, I, a, I have a feeling Wes I, isn't going to win an Oscar. Well deserved, the short. It was like no question oh, about man, it. Oh, man, that was... I, like, if you have a little time, uh, you know, after 40 we... we, we no, no. But I was gonna the um, the boy and the uh, the crane. Oddly enough, oh the one that, that the cornfield yeah. or whatever. I feel like that one's pretty. No, you I don't, don't think, think so? us in, is in, gonna pick like no no. I but just to that, show them like how intense. I I would mm-hmm. I would still go with Henry Sugar. I don't I, I think that's gonna be damn for per, West? per his palette. I I really enjoyed Poison the snake one. Oh, that one was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for for Castro's palette and where he's at is right now. West? Yeah, yeah, these are the three short films. They're all on Netflix. Four. So Four. he won. Four? Yeah, because he did the snake one. He did uh, oh. the, the boy in the crane, oh. and then he did uh, the the rat one. And was it a oh, that's right, that's right, was it a right. collection that he won, or just for no, one? No, just of them? For he one won for one. one. So they're all they're one. all considered but they're part separate. of the collection. It's on Netflix. It's yeah. Forty minutes long. I want to see the one that he won though. It's forty minutes long. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a long. I, know, I will to. say this. I will say this. I I don't think I hate and that man. Okay. I'm not trying to supplement what you said about his style because I don't think his style should change. I will, however, no, say no, no. I don't think Wes Anderson is going to win an Oscar until he steps out of himself a little bit. Exactly. That's I think, what I meant. I think That's he needs like another Grand Budapest. Said. Exactly what he yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> he needs another Grand Budapest. Because I, I think right now he's uh, still exploring this style, this this yeah. weird, yeah. unique blend medium where it's all of the things that he's uh, loved and gained from his animation, yeah. the theater, um, you know, photography, like all these, this style of just these large amalgamation yeah. of things. I think he still has a few more of those that he wants to explore. And then I feel like he'll settle himself into something. And I think when he settles himself into something and he's exploring again, going back to these intimate stories, like, uh, we saw, um, Oh yeah. Like grand Budapest or moonrise kingdom, yeah. very intimate stories where, the style is there, but you're focused on what is happening to these characters in this place. And it's not so metaphorical. I think his metaphorical work sometimes can get lost in the sauce. Um, I think those, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll see the nomination and we'll see, you know, uh, hopefully a win for him. But um, in this stage, I don't think it's bad that he's not getting that kind of like award. Because, again, it's almost yeah. like a, with Marty and all that, you know. They're they, kind of... They're kind of past it in a way. Yeah, like, yeah. if they get it, that's amazing, Great. and they feel validated. And but they yeah, also, yeah. they're exploring something that's even beyond themselves. That's beyond a, yeah. beyond themselves, beyond awards. You know, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, let's put it this way, man. Like, we talked about Sayajit Ray, and Sayajit Ray didn't get an Oscar until he was in his deathbed, literally. You know what I mean? Uh, who gives a shit? You know, but he made some of the most impactful cinema yeah. ever. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what these guys are chasing. Yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So next week we got some like it hot, right, Carlos? Really? I heard okay. none like it hot. Really? <laughs> yeah, we got some like it hot. Um, it's a freebie kind of month, no okay. theme, uh, and I want to explore Billy Wilder, and I want to explore Billy nice. Wilder in this context. Um, you'll find out why. So um, yeah, we're gonna do Billy Wilder some like it hot. Good really? Pick. I love it. I That's love not it. a joke. We're doing some like it hot. Genuinely. Yeah, genuinely. Wow. I've always made the joke. I. Some like it hot. It took me a while before I even knew that was a film. So I'm like, you're not. Did, or is it today? Sh- is it today that you know no, 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 the actual you're, film? <laughs> did five seconds ago. Just um, uh, yeah, Austin's never seen it. Ah, Jack Lennon. You've never, uh, never seen it. So Jack we saw Lennon, it in film school, yeah. so we got kind of caught up with that. But um, it's it's one of my fa- favorite Billy Wilder pictures, and it's it's got so much to say, and it's got great performers. By the way, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character in Asteroid City was modeled after Marilyn Monroe. So fun fact. Yeah, kind of, kind of. And the actress that played her also, that you know, she's blonde, and she wears, wears glasses, yeah. and she's trying to get serious. You know? yeah. So uh, it was actually Marilyn oh, Monroe. Geez. So anyways, um, Marilyn Monroe, starring Mar- Marilyn Monroe, Jack Lemmon. I love Lemon. I always forget the other actor's name. Jeez. John oh. Cassavetes. 
Curtis. Tony Curtis. Tony, Tony Curtis. Curtis. Yeah. Tony Curtis, Jack Lemon. Curtis. I only and, remember and Curtis. And Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Uh, and Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot. Nice. We will tackle that next week. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into the Watch Our Film Podcast as we covered Asteroid City. Fantastic picture. Go check it out if you haven't. And um, stay tuned for the next pictures that we're going to announce. It's going to be lots of fun. And we have some guests lined up also for the Tower Cast. You can't be up soon. miss that. Yeah, Please so subscribe if yep. you stuck this long and you're not subscribed. Because obviously you like the conversation. Oh, or you it. forgot to turn it off. Yes. <laughs> Thank way. you for leaving it on. We've been averaging two hours. Let us know if you guys like that. I have genuine people who watch the podcast consistently who are like, hey, man, it's a little too long. I don't know if everybody feels that way. I certainly don't because I love – I could – we could keep going another hour, honestly, yeah. if, if we if we really allowed sure. it. Um, so let us know if you guys like this format. I don't know. Or what do you consider a good <laughs> length? I also feel like this is one of the more in-depth conversations that we're just so interested in this topic that it's back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not just trying to argue on whether if it's a good film or God. It's No, we're all exploring it. Exploring it. So yeah. it's great. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned for next week. We really do and, appreciate it. Um, good night. Good night. Love you guys. Bye. Wait, who voiced the Roadrunner? Wes Anderson. <laughs> Wes no Anderson way. voiced every cartoon character. Yeah, yeah, leave that on. Every what? single one. Yeah. Wait, so even like the alien? Yeah. He has to. Wow. He has yeah, to. That was Wes. That's Dang. awesome. Good, Good night, night. everybody! Go watch it. Hey, we're going to say like, what type of film? That's why I say you should get the bird, man, because that's Wes. Wow. And by he the was way, also he the weasel it. in uh, Fantastic Mr. Oh, Fox. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. only reason he did that, the, the, the Roadrunner, yeah. is he's paying homage to the Roadrunner in Looney Tunes. Really? Oh. Yeah, Desert, Coyote, Roadrunner. Oh my god. That's the only reason that thing's in there. Cool. See, these are the things I can't appreciate. Two hours is not enough time. I don't know what to tell you.